scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. So you can compare yourself with mediocre and because you are the best among them, you think the gates of prosperity will just open. No, sir. It doesn't happen that way. There is a cut-off point in life that you must cross for this money to enter your hand right now the formula for wealth remember the formula I told you this is the grand formula for wealth pastors don't teach it because most of them don't know it they think that the reason why they are prosperous is because they are preaching the gospel we established that that, that is an incomplete truth, it's a lie no pastor is prospering just because he's preaching the gospel it's not true any pastor that tells you that is simply because he doesn't know why he's prospering. It is not because you are a preacher that you are prospering. And at the same time, it's not because you are a preacher that you are poor. Let me use the opportunity and balance this. How many ladies have been praying that a man of God does not come close to them because men of God have been associated. The moment you say you are a poor person, they say, you went to school to read all of this just to be a pastor as if it's a course. And people say, ah, may God that sent you go with you. And the lady who is going with you, I pray for you. You see, all those kinds of pity. What? <laughs> what gave us this wicked mindset? If you come and say, daddy, a pilot asked me, I'll say, are you joking? What did you tell him? Say, I'm thinking about it. Say, are you crazy? Go outside him and let's change our story. But the moment you say a pastor, say, ah, what did you tell him? I said yes. I, oh, we have. You see that is a mindset, and that mindset has made many pastors to try to be rich anyhow to prove to the parents that when I married your daughter, it was Gary you gave me your house. But come and see what God has done. You never get rich just because you are a preacher. You get rich because of what the formula that I taught you. And this is the formula. That the amount of money we receive, your wealth or your income, will always be in exact proportion to three things. Number one, the demand or the need for what you do, your ability to do it, and the difficulty in replacing you. This is the formula for wealth. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so it's there. The amount of money you receive, your wealth or your income will what? Always, don't forget, always be in exact proportion to the demand or the need for what you do. This is why pastors are rich. Because what they are teaching, there is a need for it. Are you seeing that? Your ability to do what you do is not just a demand for it alone. That you have skill and proficiency enough to do it well and then number three the difficulty in replacing you the degree to which is difficult to find somebody like you doing the same thing brothers and sisters hear me this is the exact formula for wealth it will work for anybody any day anywhere it's a principle unfortunately preachers just tell you tithe and sow a seed and go and sit back and watch what God will do then favor will come but because you do not understand you will come and testify praise the lord i gave tight or i dropped the seed in miracle service and now somebody brought one million the question is will you remain a millionaire after three years 
two weeks after that testimony you, your mind takes you where you were before you drop the seed say I refuse to be poor shout it I refuse to be poor I make up my mind to be wealthy see, what I'm going to show you tonight if you remain poor after this series you were not fair to yourself I'm being very sincere with you when I show you what you're about to learn tonight see let me tell you brothers and sisters don't trivialize what you are hearing now people pay millions of naira to hear half of what you are hearing I have a responsibility over us to make sure that we hear the truth I got a testimony that there's a pastor who is in oil and gas he's a living faith pastor and he stumbled across the wealthy place part two just the part two and I heard that when he listened to it he was looking for all his friends and business associates and giving them and say I've been a businessman and I have never had this this is somebody into oil and gas he said it changed his mind completely and now you are here seated and you're just nodding many of our parents if they had one tenth of what I'm telling you I promise you they would have been billionaires see this this thing is 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 so magical that no matter how dull is not left to your personal intelligence at all this is this is the thing that makes wealth a great blessing if it was just a product of the y the x intellect some people would be disadvantaged but it was designed in such a way that even the dullest who is obedient will be wealthy it's god speaking to us So the amount of money we receive will be in exact proportion to this and we did a little personal evaluation take note of that let's go straight to the teaching of tonight the wealthy place part three i'm on my way on my way on my way to paradise. I'm on my way, on my way, on my way to better days. I'm on my way, on my way. multiple streams of income right tonight I want to teach you the law that is responsible for activating multiple streams of income I pray you value it I pray from the depth of my heart that you value it I struggled with sharing what I'm about to share today because I was wondering see I hate it when personally because I treasure every information and I treasure every revelation that I bring out and um, the greatest reward that I can receive for this is not 1 million, it's not 10 million it's not to say come and take a car or take a house that's, that's not my concern the greatest reward for this series is that we see people experiencing the financial rain in their lives for me this is the greatest consolation no matter what you buy or sow into my life is as irrelevant as whatever it will really grieve my heart if after this teaching your finances does not change I don't know what to tell you again. praise the Lord because this is the very secret of the world's greatest millionaires billionaires all of them every single one of them if you have ever admired them this is the key I've reduced the work for you all the tens and hundreds of books seminars videos and all kinds of sacrifices has been compressed in a series for you to receive if you don't act on it there's no reason why you should blame God 
Unfortunately, I know that not all of us will act on it. It's a sad truth. That's why Jesus told the disciples, he said, the poor you will always have with you. Meaning there are people, no matter what they hear, they will not change. And the trouble is those who don't change are the ones who will criticize us. They will get angry because they are not doing anything. And they'll say it's not true. What they've taught is not true. People, if I told you now, all of you, take off your shoes. Put your right finger. There's something I'm going to bring out and shake. Many of you say, my, my story will change. Because you like things that don't commit you. You see why we like fetish things? Africa, for that matter. They say, turn around and slap something three times. They go, it's done. The man leaves rejoicing. Because that spirit of laziness... We hate it. Whenever you tell people it's up to you, they say, no, do it for me. Just do it and give me the result. God will bless you. Unfortunately, life is not like that. We like a wolf. That a wolf mindset has done a lot. We like telling people, thank you. Just do it and you say, really, just for me? Unfortunately, not everything in life is a gift. There are things that are rewards. They will commit you. This is one of them. That's why people like lottery. They like inheritance. It's one word that we love in Africa. Inheritance. He died and left it for me. <laughs> That's why we love that scripture. The wealth of the wicked. Ah, yeah, yeah. Notice I've not touched that scripture. The wealth of the wicked is laid for me. You will grow old. That scripture was written. Wait, hold on. That scripture was written before our forefathers were born is that true that scripture was even written before colonialism and those who quoted it died without touching the wealth my bible says god gives to a man that is good in his sight wisdom and knowledge and then he gives to the unbeliever to heap and to gather that he may give to the believer we think that is just because we are singing praises and tithing then dangote will get up one day and say um Shahoma, there is an anointing on me. I don't know what is upon me. Please come. Uh, this is my sugar company. It's your own. If that is your idea about the massive kingdom wealth transfer, be delivered now in the name of Jesus Christ. But what an illusion. You really believe the man will leave his PA, his sons and daughters, wives and concubines, and then just come to you because you think, listen, I know we keep talking a lot. We say in one day, the wealth of Egypt was given to Israel. You don't talk about 40 years when Moses was in the wilderness. You don't talk about Moses' compliance. You don't talk about his repeatedly going to Pharaoh. We see courage. We see audacity. We see character. We see discipline right we see faith we see patience you leave all of that one and the only thing you see is that in one night i've told you preparation takes time it's manifestation that is instant we talk about joseph becoming the prime minister we forget that a woman lied that he raped her do you know what it means to be scandalized on your road to destiny we forget all that one and we just say in one day joseph came up from the day he helped someone to the day of his reward was two years. The wine presser forgot about him, yet he was still faithful. He was not offended. We are the ones who have deceived you. Pastors, pastors are the ones who have deceived sincerely and innocently, but very wrongly. And we must admit it. I told you many pastors do not have financial literacy. Why? Because all we do is copy and paste. I go for a pastor's conference. I hear what a man of God I honor says. And you see, the fact that you are... Um, the wealth of ministers is, is, is a very special case in Nigeria. Because a man as a pastor may not have financial intelligence and yet be rich. Because of the way ministry is done. Are you getting the point? He is fulfilling the law, although he does not know it, so he is rich. 
and he thinks the reason why he's rich is just because he's anointed no sir this is the reason so many people are under pressure if i must be rich like my daddy or papa i must be a pastor right so there are so many people who are not called into the fivefold ministry racing to make sure they start churches in the hope that if i have plenty members imagine what it will translate to let me tell you something funny that someone told me i think it was a year or two ago we were somewhere and i paid for something and the person looked at me he said man of god you are the people who enjoy ministry see all the plenty crowd in koinonia you see you see why he's poor because in his mind he's saying abba everybody prophets of everybody gives you ten ten thousand or one one thousand you see that on koinonia database there are about six thousand five hundred people multiply that one times even one one this is how poor people think they just say kai apostle tell us the truth you are enjoying see <laughs> if that's what you are thinking how much have you given me <laughs> how much have you given me your personal seed no, that's wrong that's not how you think that's not the reason why men of God are prosperous multiple streams of income let's go to the business of the night are you blessed yes Genesis chapter 2 Nossa que buti Nossa que buti Sing it one more time Nossa que buti Nossa que buti Verse 10 Genesis 2 verse 10. I want to show you a mystery. May God open your eyes tonight in the name of Jesus. Help us, media. It's possible. Genesis 2 verse 10. Only you are worthy. Everyone read. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and it became what? Four. Next verse. The name of the first was Pishon, that which is that which compassed the whole land of Havilah, where there is what? Stop. The Bible says, look at me. From Eden there was one river, and then it said the river parted itself into four streams. And it started telling us that every one of the streams had a particular treasure. In one of it there was gold, and the Bible says the gold is good. It started listing precious metals and so on and so forth. Are you getting my point now? So, one river parting itself into four streams. A particular man of God said this and I believe so much. The secret to oceanic wealth is having multiple streams of income. A stream can dry, but an ocean never dries. Never dries. An ocean never dries. A little stream can dry, but an ocean will never dry. This from scripture becomes for us a revelation into constructively building a robust, recession-proof financial life, multiple streams of income. The greatest limitation with the Nigerian economy and the nigerian citizens generally is the mindset that operates a single stream of income and that single stream of income is usually our job job that job mindset is one of the greatest financial stumbling block in my opinion that's what has stopped many people so an average young man in nigeria operating under the 6334 system you know completes his secondary education 
and then goes to the university to study for maybe four, five, six years or whatever and then may add a master's or whatever it is and the moment he graduates the first thing in his mind now please don't get me wrong just follow me i'm not against job but the first thing is his, in his mind is to be employed it's not his fault it's not her fault the system designed you that way are you getting me so the moment you finish the first question elderly people ask you is ah uh -uh, you are finished now you say yes say so where are you working not what are you producing not are you deploying your potentials where are you working so it trains you to serve it trains you to work now the trouble is this the average salary of a young graduate or even somebody that is working well in nigeria ranges within 50 to 100 thousand is that fair enough that's about the amount right <laughs> no matter how careful you are with that money it cannot fund your vision are you getting the point now a job was never designed to completely fund your assignment getting one stream of income or staying on one stream of income is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle please listen to me operating under one stream of income i don't care how successful that stream is is the key to insufficiency and perpetual financial struggle that's the reason why many people never have enough now you are working and they think the problem is that their paycheck is just hundred thousand then they now rise to a managerial level where they may be earning about 250 maybe 350 some people never even earn that much and then they find out that things do not change right because of parkinson's law that your need will rise to meet your level of income the meaning of that is you cannot be earning 300,000 and be eating at mama food is that true so while you were earning 10,000 or 20,000 or 50,000 you can go to a place where you eat food for 70 naira but you cannot be earning 300,000 and go and sit down eating the food for 70,000 naira so your need your your expenses will rise with your level of income you were earning 50,000 and you were able to do something decent with it and then you forgot that you are going to get married you thought your wife was a toy you don't know that she's a human being with a stomach to eat a body to dress and then you had the gods to get her pregnant here comes your twins see that yet hold on whether you call them children or adults financially they are three human beings are you getting me regardless of their level of consumption they will still take something out from you and then you have a dog oh and then you have goats you see we, you don't know that all the once it is a living entity it must consume you have been counting yourself alone are you getting the point now now the trouble is there is nothing called job security job security is an illusion you know what job security is job security means that you are working in a place where um your your stay can be fairly predictable that you can build a financial life around it because you think that in the next 10 or 15 years you will still be there in the nigeria of today and in the 21st century the concept of job security does not exist praise the lord everybody say hallelujah say i got a federal government job which one civil defense and you laugh to mean that for the next 20 years i will be there you really think so see that so we find consolation oh i'm working in a bank and all of a sudden you get up one day and your director tells you sorry we are downsizing people and uh, here's the list of those who must go what did I do so I said no 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 you didn't do anything we really appreciate you in fact your services are well needed can you leave I remember somebody who got a job I think he was with Etisalat or um, Airtel one of these um, telecommunication companies he was very happy at the point he was preparing for his marriage he prepared based on that budget 
Then they now told them they are moving the office to Ibadan or something. And they told them they will share. You either follow them to Ibadan or they will give you 200,000 and off you go. And he smiled and collected the 200,000. Because you see, when you are poor, you think 200,000 is a lot of money. Until you collect it and find out that the money to transport your in-laws or to transport yourself in you know, we we'll finish everything and then you find out that you are... I will never forget, a few days to his wedding, he refused to come to the place where the wedding will take place. I had to call him and say, where are you? He said, I'm so so place. I said, leave that place right now and come. What is all that? Can't be... Can't run away. Just come and trust God. Hmm. That's very true. Nothing in this world will satisfy. This is a part of the song I love. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Every mundane, listen, the Babylonian system, this cosmos, the economy of the world was never designed to make you rich. It was designed to strangle you to death. That's why I like that song. He's the cup that will never Jesus, you're the cup. Can you sing just that part one more time? Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. The wisdom of the word can open you up to a realm. It may not happen immediately, but as surely as the morning comes after the night, it can bring you into the place we call the wealthy place. There is such a place here and now. Hallelujah. So, the single income stream is one of the things that has destroyed a lot of people. Why do we need multiple streams of income? Number one, to ensure abundance at all seasons. To ensure abundance at all seasons. To ensure abundance at all seasons. Please let me have four people. I want to use them to just um, make an illustration. Three, four people. Let me. Thank you. Just stand here, guys. Watch this. Let's call these guys different streams. Just stand and face me. Thank you. Watch this. If this is the first and only stream of income you have, let's call this a job, right? Who we'll identify what the others are shortly but let's assume this is all you have your job let's even call it a nice place nmpc that's where many of us dream of or shell or chevron or whatever it is you want to call it right watch this this is all you have number one it was never designed to fund your project and number two your salary will only keep coming to the extent to which that corporation keeps functioning it's one thing for you to be employed and it's another thing for your corporation to keep being relevant if you were working in nitel in the 90s you would be happy because nitel was invincible i mean they were the only telecommunication company you would imagine that working in nitel by now you would have been the boss only for you to be fired and sent away because the demand right for as long as there was a demand for their product and their service they had money when there was no demand number two if you were working in night post post office right and you were working as the secretary using the typewriters whether electronic or manual doesn't matter right now we have emails i remember when we used to post letters in fact even with the young people have experienced some dramatic transitions. Remember when they used to use card? You get a card and then you load it 200, 500 and you slot it in one big something and you hold it, you know. And then you are trying to talk and then the card just finishes and it starts beeping. Only for you to go and buy another one. Imagine within the last 10 to 20 years, the transition that has happened. So for you to say job security in terms of working in an organization is a mirage the service that organization provides may be inelastic but then 
the question is what is the guarantee that they will still need your service how many people do we know seated here listening to me right now many who are following us online how many people do you know started working very well and they were happy they gave tight sincere people and now they've been laid off and they've remained there in their utter frustration five years have turned to ten years ten years has turned to fifteen years and many of us look around and we say daddy I grew up knowing you not to work and they say I've been waiting uh, even last week I submitted my CV and look at this he started that when you were five years now you are 25 for 20 years he's hoping that one day somebody will need his service enough to give him a job one stream the beauty of multiple streams is this watch this the the limitation of one stream is covered up by another stream are you getting what I'm saying now there is no stream of income that is perfect what you can do is to combine streams of income that complement one another so that the lapse of one is covered by the availability of another are, are you getting the point now this is part of the benefits for instance do you know that is one thing for you to get a job but it's another thing for you not to be paid there are workers in some states that have not been paid for how many months almost six months now you notice I'm sorry to say but most of the civil servants in Nigeria don't pay them for two to four months and they are dead completely dead are you seeing that those who have extra streams of income while they wait for the salary to be paid there's something to fall back on see they can laugh with you and say Kai times are hard but it's not true they are saying it because you will insult them if they say times are not hard they are identifying with that poverty mindset so they say it's true times are hard but the truth is they are, they are, they are, on heaven. They are in heaven heaven on earth you see that so you find out that this person is here God forbid his car is stolen his salary alone was designed to take care of the family but because there is another stream in two or three months he has bought another car for some for somebody who collected he was loaned from the bank and he bought a car of 2.5 million you have not finished paying the loan and they've stolen the car you know you are finished whether you are to go for work or not you must go because if not for anything that loan must be paid out of the 2.5 you've paid only maybe 90,000 or 130,000 you know that you are, the journey is still far you cannot afford to quit your job no matter how sick you are so you see people angrily dragging themselves in the morning that's why they vent the anger on you they get up and look at you one two three four five six children now the seventh one has come there is a loan of nine million to pay in the bank they now cut our salary from two hundred thousand to one hundred and fifty and the man is saying where is my life going see every man you have seen was not like that every man you have seen who is angry beating his wife I can tell you if that's how he toasted the woman she would have told him no something made them happen notice men from 50 years and above that's why people don't even remember father's day because all we remember about fathers is they are cruel and wicked it's not their fault it's the inability to learn what i'm teaching you and if you don't learn it i guarantee you in the name of the lord you are on the way to becoming exactly like that absolutely in fact it will be harder because the 21st century living in the 21st century right now is a lot more difficult and complex right well if you factor in terrorism if you factor in wickedness by people put in all these factors humanly speaking that living in the 21st century is living in a challenging time your advantage is in the fact that you have many streams so you are an ocean receiving from many streams if one stream dries up there is another that can complement while you're working on that one then there is another there is no millionaire i know except wicked and godless and corrupt and wicked people except those ones but there is nobody who is a millionaire and a billionaire and trust me i've met a number of them in my life none of them operates under one stream 
is poor and average people, civil servants that operate on one stream of income. You calculate everything, what the father and the mother is getting. For some, it's not even up to 100,000. And yet, the school fees of one child is 75,000 or 50,000 or even 30,000. Why would the man not be angry? Do you know how many angry people are in Nigeria? Have you seen them lately? You stand outside tomorrow morning and just watch. Just get a chair and sit down and watch people angry. Somebody will be moving and just kick something. Oh, and he just stress. Don't laugh. Oh, I'm, I'm very serious about what I'm saying. You are laughing now because somebody is giving you money all the time. By the end of this year, they will tell you you have come of age. And uh, we, we have seen how God has helped you thus far. From now henceforth, you are on your own. That's when it will dawn on you. You will go back to your notes and start reading everything that I've said. I saw this happen to my father. I saw this happen in my very family. I saw this happen to many pastors. Sincere people. Very honest people. This has happened to many ministries. There are many beggarly ministries. This has led people into witchcraft. It has led people into corruption. Get the implication of this. It has led people into 419. It has led people into all kinds of things. Whenever they catch armed robbers or they catch prostitutes, look at our ladies. Many ladies have gone into prostitution. Do you know that I, I saw a shocking statistic that I think is it about 40% of the firstborn in many families are not the product of the husband and the wife. When we get to heaven, there's going to be a lot of confession. Very funny statistics. Multiple streams of income is the key to surviving financially in the 21st century. Activating multiple streams of income, hear me brothers and sisters, is the key to surviving the vicious tide. The vicious tide of economic hardship because it will happen. You have not seen recession yet. More will come. It's in your Bible. Right? Talking about the heavens over people becoming like brass and their earth becoming like iron. It will happen. You can't stop it. You can only exempt yourself. I choose to exempt myself. So I rather pay the price now and exempt myself. Hallelujah. Bless you guys. Thank you. So the limitation of one stream is covered by the availability of another. Now watch this. I want to teach you something about the benefit of multiple streams of income. Write two words down. One, cash flow. Please, quickly, let's save time. We have to finish um, what we have. One, cash flow. Number two, write capital projects. One, cash flow. Two, capital projects. You are not... Listen, you are not truly financially free if there is no structure around your life to deal with these things. Watch this. Cash flow talks of the money that keeps coming consistently to be able to meet your immediate needs and your expenditure. Is that true? Capital projects or the money, the income for capital projects talks about the resource, the financial resources that you will need for all the capital projects you have building, you know, school fees of your children and, and all of that, savings and so on and so forth. Now watch this. Our parents were taught so much about long-term projects. So they bought land, right? They have cattle, they have goats, they have a lot of things that can meet long-term projects, but they did not make arrangements for cash flow. So you can see a man that owns 10 houses but he cannot produce 10 naira to take his child to the hospital under emergency you will think the man is stingy because you that's how many of our parents many of us now think our parents are giving some other people money they may not necessarily be doing that they are just financially illiterate and they are suffering the consequence for it so they do not 
they didn't prepare for today they were focusing so much on tomorrow they forgot that it's until you are alive today that you can meet tomorrow are you getting that now so they forgot that there will be needs how many houses have you gone to that you know the people are rich and sincerely they cannot bring out 1,000 naira to go and buy chicken somewhere and just come and prepare it because the man is broke he may say I don't have money you think he's joking but truly truly there is nothing that's a poor financial life yet he has land right yes he has resources who owns this container he's the person who owns this coca-cola depot he's the person but there's no provision for this now the trouble is in a bit to remedy that the younger generation our generation has focused entirely on cash flow to get money to always be in your pocket and we're forgotten about tomorrow you see the mistake so I need money now I want to buy the watch of 20,000 now I want to buy the trouser now so you see somebody and say man this guy is rich the watch of 20,000 shoe of 15 or 20,000 you are wearing a suit of this you calculate everything on him and he's standing he's wearing 200,000 and you are beguiled to think he's very rich steal everything he's wearing and he becomes a beggar instantly because he's not preparing for tomorrow are you getting what i'm saying so financial literacy is the ability to keep that balance such that you can eat today you can live well today and then at the same time prepare for tomorrow there are many of our parents you will start enjoying their money when they are eight years at eight years the project they started 20 years will now come to fruition but at that time they are too old they can't do anything they would die and leave it for uncles who will swear that they will charm you if you don't leave that money alone and you will quietly just leave are you seeing that now and then we the younger generation are so obsessed i'm amazed to see the way our generation is so obsessed about producing instant results watch people that graduate everybody wants to show i'm working i now bought a car a bmw and um, i don't i no longer use the road i now fly i fly i fly around i'm flying to this place i'm flying to that place and then you carry your phone and say this is this is iphone iphone what iphone 6 have you seen the speed of the internet and so on and so forth and then we use this to lie to ourselves that it means we are rich that's why every rich man we look at every small boy just behaving and nod his head and say this guy is about to regret it unfortunately most of our sisters have been trained to identify those kind of people and define them as being rich so you come back and say is that brother that asked me and they say which one the poor one or the rich one and then you say the rich one meaning the one that held that phone the one that the, the watch or the shoes and all this were glittering you are you will be in big error because if you neglect today you will die today and never meet tomorrow and if you concentrate just on today you will enjoy today if you wear the cloth you should wear tomorrow today you walk naked tomorrow if you eat the food you should eat tomorrow today get set for hunger are you getting what i'm saying so my goal in the teaching tonight is to be able to help you structure your financial life such that you will be able to at least have something to live by and then prepare greatly for the future praise the lord hallelujah thank you jesus for wisdom the key to activating multiple streams of income write this down you do not activate the stream just by blindly starting up many businesses now i listen to business people a lot and i've had the privilege to be and speak in a few conferences but the problem here watch this for many people the danger huh, is that they just tell you go and start up a business aside from your job do something else that teaching is very sincere but misleading if you have received that teaching i want you to throw it away now and listen to what i'm about to teach you because for many people that's that's the circumference of your business seminar are you getting blessed so they've told you together with the job start something anything just start no sir you will start and fail and fail woefully write this down 
God's system for activating your streams of income. I want to teach you the kingdom system. There is a Babylonian system of establishing multiple streams of income that ends you in frustration, ends you in penury, or you will be rich, but at the expense of your salvation. You will be rich, but at the expense of very important things in your life. Everything that we do, we must do it from the perspective of the kingdom. And this is where men of God must balance. I believe in, in reaching out to business and getting a lot of business people and their ideas. But please hear me. You must be careful. Not everything taught in the business world should just be lifted and brought to church hook, line and sinker. Many men of God go for a lot of secular business meetings and they teach them a lot of things and they are motivated I've, I've listened to all those people to trust me but you must sustain a kingdom paradigm to be able to edit out the things that are not consistent with the way of the Lord because anything that is not founded on the truth of God's word I don't care what it is it will not last or even if it produces result for you it will take something else out of your life it is the blessing of the Lord that make it rich and will not add sorrow to it say amen so what is God's system for activating the streams of income? Let's hurry up. Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs Eighteen verse sixteen. Quickly, it's a popular scripture we always talk about, but from here we'll rush so that we'll finish on time. What I'm about to bring before you is a powerful revelation that will change your life. Proverbs eighteen verse sixteen. Let's read on. It says, "A man's gift." Please listen. Please pay attention. A man's gift does what? Does two things. What's number one? it makes room for him is that true what's number two it brings him before a man's gift does two things for him it gives him opportunity and it gives him access write it down your gift does two things for you that is very vital in producing finances in your life it gives you opportunities and then it gives you access access entrance before the great a man's gift so how do you identify the streams of income in your life many people have been taught they so they teach you different businesses and they tell you just do this this no 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 no. there's no guarantee that because they gave you a good business idea you will succeed you see the mistake this is where we mess up and we mislead people a lot write this down you identify the streams in your life by looking at two things number one your gifts and abilities your gifts and abilities are pointers to the kinds of streams that God has granted you access to your gifts and your abilities write it down number two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion these are the two scriptural ways of identifying the streams that God puts in your life one your gifts and your abilities two the problems and the opportunities that are in line with your passion not just any problem you know they tell people search for problems there are problems all around nigeria you go and try a problem that you don't have passion for and that's when you know that problems are not things you just solve overnight it must be in line with your passion passion is the key that sustains you in a place it is passion that puts you back up when you fail anytime you commit yourself to anything you are not passionate about you waste your time you waste energy you waste resources 
is God helping us? Write this down. Every gift and ability you have is a potential stream of income. How true? Every gift and ability in your life is a potential stream of income. Every gift and every ability you have is a potential stream. Look at David for instance. Almost every gift the Bible identifies in David later became a stream for him. His ability to play, right? His ability to be faithful in service. His leadership skill. Everything was utilized in his life. I'm about to make a statement that is very striking. Maybe controversial. Especially for pastors. I want you to listen to me. Do not let men box you into one stream. And stop you from exploring other streams. Don't get into that illusion of making people box you because they identify and they know you as functioning in one stream. If you are not careful, people can put you in a box. They know you as a pastor and you remain a pastor and die a pastor. There are other streams crying for expression. But the religious environment keeps people down and keeps people poor. There's a lot that I want to say here. How many times have many pastors with great entrepreneurial potentials, with great leadership potentials, there are other streams of income that can find expression, but they are boxed to the pulpit and left there. Why? Because people say you are a pastor. And the meaning of that is remain there be poor there and die there this kind of mentality does not longer exist in the 21st century you cannot live in the 21st century with this mindset again or i am a civil servant so when you call people you say those who are civil servants this side and you see a mass of people like bees coming to this side those who are businessmen this side that thing is about to change in the 21st century that concept of choosing whether you are a civil servant or choosing whether you are an entrepreneur. Are you getting my point? There must be a weaving of it to survive the vicious financial circle in the 21st century. Are you getting blessed? Is God helping you? There are many pastors. I say this with a particular bias for pastors because we have said pastors are wicked people because pastors have been caught in all kinds of financial scandals in church eating god's money pastors have been found manipulating people and doing all sorts of things and the reason is because they have to respond to the necessary frustration that comes by having a single stream of income now the man is a pastor and is earning twenty thousand with five children right you can imagine what that is that you give a pastor a house and one car does not mean he will not need money again and they themselves have not been educated they have not been taught they lack financial literacy are you getting the point now so the pastor has to necessarily keep preaching messages that will manipulate people into because he the pastor's children must go to school is that not true the pastor must also eat some of you after the service you go to the pastor's house 10 people immediately after after service and all of them deserve to be fed This has brought a lot of problems for people, especially those in ministry. Listen to me. Every potential you have that God put in you is crying for expression and you should never go back to the Lord without giving it expression. Every gift in you. I plan in my life that every gifting and every potential His Majesty has deposited in my life will be adequately deployed. Praise the Lord. There are so many things. That's why many pastors are poor. That's why they are broke. One of my greatest mentors, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who was able to cut across both the secular and the contemporary society, utilized his potentials. As a pastor, he was the senior pastor and the founder 
of Bahamas Faith Ministry International. And yet, at the same time, brothers and sisters, he was a consultant for 16 presidents. How many? A consultant, an advisor to 16 presidents. At the same time, he was so notable, the Bahamian nation had to make him an ambassador. Imagine that. And then at the, at the same time, he owned an aircraft company, not aircraft. They are busy shouting that people are buying jets. Many of you may not know. Let me explain it to you. What it means, it, he, he not owned one aircraft, Boeing 737. No, 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 no. He owned a fleet of aircraft, the very company that deals in it. And yet he was a kingdom man. He lived well on earth and is gloriously honored in heaven. That's why he was a man of integrity. He was not just a man of integrity because he's the, there was absolutely no need. Why will you steal church money? For what? How much is the money? Are you getting the point? I tell you the truth. Not exposing people to the different giftings in their lives to deploy it and then leaving them say, it's like you are hungry, you fasted for three days and then they make hot food, nice food, rice up and steaming right and then one drink is in front of you and they say just keep your nose and be staring at it but don't touch it that's the same frustration that happens to a pastor that you live with millions in a church account and he's sitting down and his son he cannot pay thirty thousand. they must be thieves necessarily with time even if their conviction at you see that don't trivialize what i'm sharing with you that's the reason why many, many pastors cannot be bold in teaching the truth. Because they have inconvenienced too many people. And God is helping us tonight. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I am gifted. Shout it in the name of Jesus. There is a gift upon my life. There are graces upon my life. There are abilities upon my life. And I will deploy every one of them to become a stream of income. Even if God tells me to drop ministry today, I will never be poor for the rest of my life because there are other streams. Are you getting me? Before God called me, I was doing something. Is that not true? You see, many of us act as if, oh, God found people lazy. Go and read your Bible. Everybody God called into ministry, he called from he called them from a standpoint of diligently doing something. Moses was tending his father-in-law's sheep. Is that true? Every single one. Peter, they were all fishermen. God does not call lazy people. Please don't make it look like being in ministry is a license unto laziness. There are too many things I can do with my life to bring me stream of income. If I'm not a preacher, at least I can speak right there are so many things there are books to write i have different thoughts on different areas i can document my persuasions there are all kinds of financial and business vehicles to set up so don't you see a man of god rich and just think it's church money or just think and think are people not dashing their money you see articles blackmailing men of god all around and saying a man who was poor but now he has as though he's not supposed to be blessed people are arguing and complaining about one jet two jets my goodness i don't know what will happen by the time we we'll come if we need 100 jets we will buy all of them i guarantee you very unapologetically see that you can be rich through the dignity of kingdom integrity. It doesn't have to be by crooks. It doesn't have to be by pranks. And you don't have to be angry at wealthy people. They look like you. You're of equal age, but your mindsets are not the same. Your sacrifices are not the same. Your courage is not at the same level. Hallelujah. Never allow anybody keep you in one position and not allow you to deploy your talents. There are many of us who are seated here. Bishop T.D. Jakes, the, the pastor of Potter's house, right? 
he wrote one book woman thou art loose just one book and that book brought him four million dollars multiply that by 210 naira there about that gives you the equivalent in naira because he deployed his writing potentials it became an added stream of income when people were insulting him for living in a house of 2.1 million i said come on give the man a break he didn't steal anybody's money why will i be worth 10 million 20 million 100 million and not live in a house how much is 1.2 how much is 2 or 3 million compared to 100 million don't insult people. If a man buys a car of 20 million, don't insult him and say he's extravagant. Compared to what? You are gauging his success based on your level. Compared to what? You see that? These are some of the poisonous mindsets that have destroyed us. We never forget, we forget the fact that these guys are sick their tape ministry the books that they have written enough will feed them for a lifetime just the books bishop oyedeko for instance i hear that he does not even collect one naira from his books and there are at least 60 books he has written how many of them are bestsellers yet we, we have we are the first to criticize people and run down men of god and run down people because how much is the peanuts you get from congregations compared to the wisdom see the bible says if any man lack wisdom let him ask not let him criticize those who are working in it hallelujah ministry for me alone with all the blessings of ministry is only one stream of income there are so many of them in my life that have been developed and others are still being developed i will never be poor it's not about being a preacher it's about realizing that once there is a demand for what i do and i train myself in the ability to see to do it when you are sleeping the wealthy people are awake studying seminars doing a lot of things right and then we see them rich and we criticize them please i want to say this koinonia from today never develop the attitude of criticizing wealthy people again you will never be like what you resent anything you drive away from your life you can never be like it honor is the seed for access hallelujah i'm friends to many by the grace of god many wealthy people and many millionaires i'm not so daft to be around people who are blessed and not ask questions see that this is very important but then let me let me quickly balance something because there are so many people who will be hearing now I explained to us that there are all kinds of streams of income. Watch this. The trouble I have, especially with men of God, in business and other things, is that they do not know how to draw the line between the different fragments and facets of their lives. Are you seeing that now? When Jesus entered the temple, what did he do? He took a whip and he was flogging those who were doing business in the church. In the church. Jesus showed us that there is a difference. As a man of God, I have my corporate life. I have other dimensions, leadership and all of that. You see that? I cannot come into church and be doing business in the church. No, no, a thousand times no. The moment I do that, I'm taking advantage of the loyalty. Are you getting that? Of the people and using it for my... That's why you never come and hear me talk business in church. No, sir. The Bible says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Right? I cannot bring up a product right now and force everybody in Koinonia to buy it. It is my product, but a lot of men of God are doing it. This is where the balance must come in. You cannot use the vast people that God has given you to train and build and then squeeze into them. No, no. There is a difference between different 
aspects of your life that's the reason why god fragmented himself into different aspects you cannot know rafa by studying gyra gyra is a dimension itself rafa is a dimension itself Sikenu is a dimension itself is that true el shaddai is a dimension itself but all of those names belong to one person i am so he said who do men say that i am and they were calling different dimensions of him as a as a man of god you are dimensional while it is true that you do not stay on one place you must know where the boundary lies never carry business into church and go and manipulate people no it's wrong very wrong if you are here as a man of god and you are doing it stop stop you must give people an opportunity to make their decisions they are not daft of course i understand sometimes because of our kindness and generosity do you know why i'm telling you this because there are some things i may not be able to share here but see the business world is a lot different from ministry in the business world you must give people room to take responsibility for themselves as a man of god you can ruin your church in one moment right i know there was a situation that happened in in one church down in abuja this is one of the popular churches around where there were some people who brought some land to sell and then they brought it to church and they designed one scheme and members were happy and all of that and then somehow the people were dishonest and they swindled the people with the church the man almost lost his ministry because people started saying our pastor is a thief he connived with people to eat our money do not think because members sit down and love you they love you as a man of god but you must give them room to build their financial capacities don't over pamper people in the name of kindness they will stab you when they fail because the business world is a world that requires its own maturity are you getting me many people do not have business sense and you expose them in the name of church to businesses or some things when things go wrong or it fails they will kill you they will write articles about you they will lock you up as a man of god and so let people take their responsibilities by themselves are you getting what i'm saying is god giving us wisdom this is a mistake a lot of pastors have made they come to church anybody just comes in and says i'm a lawyer i have some land i am a this i have that and then the pastor comes and announces and because people love the pastor they now run around and come and say this is our pastor this and that and that or they raise money to buy church land you know, all kinds of things please i'm telling us especially for men of god who are here who are upcoming maintain integrity maintain integrity as a man of god define the jurisdiction of your work to the ministry and stay there now there are other platforms you can create like sunday adelaja who created a lot of business platforms if you want to do anything that is business in the church set up a committee or a club and let people subscribe to it spell the terms of it and let the people know that they are venturing into this not in the name of the church but at their own risk that way whatever happens the integrity of the church is preserved is god teaching us i told you i struggle to teach you what i'm teaching you because this is what you would teach in a business class that you pay hundreds of thousands but this is giving us wisdom especially for those of us who are leaders don't carry the zeal of business ideas or whatever and come and project on people that they are praying in tongues and they hug you you don't yet know their attitude towards money they will stab you and kill you is god helping us let's continue so your streams of income should be around your giftings should be around your abilities your streams of income now look up i want to teach you something please very important now write this word down time t-i-m-e write this word down time your life on earth is measured in time don't forget this your life on earth is measured in time that means whatever you give your time to you have given part of your life to the time you are giving your employer or your job your office is part of your life you are giving to them
write this down focus on activating streams that increase your income without eating up your time focus there is only limited time you have everybody has only 24 hours you cannot have 25 hours in a day so if you generate streams of income around your life and all of them require your time and your active participation you will wear your life out and you will be ineffective wealthy people focus on activating streams that increase their income without necessarily eating up their time let me give you an instance if i write a book right now if i write one book right i communicate my thoughts maybe books on there's so many books that i have i'm just waiting for the lord to release me to begin to write books i know many of them will be bestsellers because i will not just get up and write books i will humble myself and meet those who have produced bestsellers and ask them i have the content but what of the marketing what of the publicity never do a thing until you have consulted with the best of the best you will minimize mistakes you will make instant progress so i can write a book right now for instance and then release it and i can be here preaching and somebody is buying my book in a bookstore doesn't know me has never seen me may never see me right and then income is coming into me millions and millions of income coming because i'm documenting my persuasions and there are many areas i can write on i can write on the anointing i can write on wealth and prosperity i can write on leadership all the areas that i know god has granted me grace in i'm just showing you how one stream now i can be here and be effective in koinonia another thing for instance if i build an estate you see that if i build an estate there are people renting i don't even know them i've never seen them for instance but i'm here teaching the word my time is being invested to the principal thing i've been called to do but there are channels that are bringing me in are you getting what i'm saying now very important if i teach assuming that we're selling our teachings imagine the hundreds of millions we would have made by now on just the media ministry but god instructed us not to do that the impact is more important than the money one grateful person can bring what we would have gotten in 10 years and bring in one day this is the benefit every time you dispense value you must be rewarded whether you sell it or you give it free it's a law so we are not at a loss at all now imagine that today's message the media department will now package it the wealthy place volume one volume two volume three right and then maybe each of them is sold now you can imagine that and all of that is happening so people are buying it somewhere whereas you are still here as much as possible value your time your time is premium you must know that you cannot give away your time unnecessarily for everything it's too much to give your life just for money no let wisdom minimize the dispensing of your time so that you will spend that time on the things that matter in life i hate seeing people spending all their time chasing after money you should chase after god chase after god seek ye first the kingdom and seek ye to align yourself to the principles of the kingdom that's what is meant by his righteousness here and he said all other things will be added let's hurry up when you give your time you give your life never forget that the reason why they pay you salary is because you are exchanging two things for that salary number one you are exchanging your gift or your potential or your your skill number two you are exchanging your time these are the two things that go for your salary you cannot afford to do this for the rest of your life because you're 24 hours if you spend one third or two third of that 24 hours investing in somebody's project and his assignment how much do you have left for yourself and for the advancement of the kingdom imagine that i cannot come for koinonia now and say because i'm trying to do something there i'm looking for money somewhere it's terrible i'm failing in my assignment it doesn't matter how much money i make so you have to be careful so that you don't just 
that's the language of those we call hustlers hustlers are those who are ready to commit their time to anything that will give them money right they have, their time is valueless to them so they can give it away just for anything my time is precious to me because my life is measured in time God gives me the gift of 24 hours every day and I focus on doing the things that are consistent with my vision and my assignment and while it is true that I want to activate streams of income it will not be at the detriment of my assignment and so you must structure your life in such a manner that you can activate multiple streams of income and then at the same time conserve your time as much as possible praise the Lord write this down there is a, an equation for financial freedom financial freedom is equal to financial abundance plus time plus peace of mind that you have money does not mean you are financially free financial freedom is equal to financial abundance the availability of the resources plus time there are people who have money but no time no time to pray no time to build no time to spend a quality time with their children and their loved ones and their families no time at all they tell you no time i'm busy i'm busy i'm busy they started doing that when they were 20 now they are 55 i'm busy i'm busy and then they die because on the seventh day god rested you you are in the ninth day you have not rested you will die hallelujah let me tell you the reason why it's so easy to be rich in the 21st century in the school of prosperity especially in the 21st century almost any and everything has a demand there is a demand for almost any and everything this is the reason why there should be no one here seated under the sound of my voice that in the next three years in the next five years should be poor impossible there is a demand for just any and everything the world is a global village there is a demand for just anything see right now even people's laugh has brought them millions somebody just laughs is it not your ringtone oh yes somebody just laughs around and does everything that side a does another one that side b you see that and you put it as your ringtone and you go and download it and you do a lot of things anything at all anything a lady because she has nice fingers will make millions because she will market the ring of a jewelry company they just keep putting rings on her hand for every ring hundred thousand dollars can you imagine just for having a nice finger there is a demand for anything so you have been playing with that your hand could it be that that's the rod of God just for being fine you can wipe poverty away from your life forever right just for being not fine you can still wipe poverty away from your life because you can be used in both ways it depends on the message that is being communicated um, I'm just I'm speaking generally there is a demand for everything absolutely everything no matter how little the skill is there is a demand for it look at how pastors you may sit down and think that there are already too many pastors allow the glory of God to come upon your life and see how many people will scrounge scrounge after that from today till Wednesday non-stop I have ministrations every day I have a meeting morning and evening you will think there are already enough pastors no no there are 7.2 billion people right you think there are an, enough people selling pure water or whatever it's because you do not know how many people are on earth when you know there is a demand for anything and i told you the formula once there is a demand there is money for it you go and meet somebody and say borrow me 10 naira you tell you i cannot but sell something he will pay you for it in the 21st century brothers and sisters you are only limited by your creativity you are only limited by your creativity ah 
there is a mighty financial army that will rise even if you don't pay attention to this I know that there are millions of people who will take this message and will run with it there's an army rising up there's an army rising up there's an army rising up they will break every chain 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 Write one word down. We're almost done. Creativity. Please write it. This is an important key in the school of prosperity. Creativity. What does it mean to be creative? Creativity is the ability to birth new or improved ideas. Oh, this is key to your life. The ability to birth new or improved ideas. If you lack this one ability, you will never be rich. Because that's the key to being different. That's the key to being unique. It's not just what you do. It's the uniqueness in it. And the key to being unique is hidden in one word. Creativity. The first revelation of God in the Bible was not as a savior. It was as a creator. And he created us in that image. Creativity. What we were born to do. Anyone who has a mind has the capacity to be creative. Your destiny is at the mercy of your creativity. This gentleman can produce this. 30 minutes of deep, intense worship just with instruments. And he will pray and fast and train himself and just package something like this. He can call it anything. The dew of heaven, part one. Millions of these copies will be sold because people will put it in their phones. Can have a contract with most of the, 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 the people, iPhones and, and iTunes and all of these people. And they can put it, they can even put it by default in many gadgets. And it's blessing people. Millions of people are buying it. And this guy is getting blessed because there is a demand for everything. That's why Don Wen will never be poor. I know you gave your life to Christ at his song, but he became rich because you bought the thing. Yes, he never sleeps, he never slumbers, but you bought it. Or at least it was given to you. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. They will break every chain. 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 Creativity is the key to effectively creating a demand. For your gifts or your potentials the reason why nobody has placed a demand on your gift is because you have not added creativity to it the reason why your shop looks like that of every other person is because you are not creative about it let me tell you in the world of prosperity you lose by becoming like every other person your uniqueness is what stands you out your competitive advantage There is what you get in Koinonia that you will never get anywhere. It cannot be cloned. There is what you get from my life that you cannot get anywhere. There is what I should get from your life that I cannot get anywhere. This is your key to prosperity. Men will never come to you if there is an alternative to you. They will come to you to the degree to which you are uncommon. the chains falling falling I hear the chains falling I will give you four streams of income that can help you 
that's that's all we'll touch for this um there are at least eight i call them recession proof streams of income they are all in the bible but i'll give only four here school of ministry students will add two more and then that's about it any other one has to be in a business or a corporate platform ready ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 if we can get niv please give us niv quickly i hear the chains can we get niv okay fine ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 2 please let's save time Will you break every chain? Break every chain. It says, Give portions to seven, yea, to eight, for you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Right? What other version do I have? It says, It says, I, I can't remember the version now, not, not amplified. It says, invest in seven places, yea, in eight. Uh, who has that version? I don't know. One of these new versions. For you do not know what disaster may come upon the land. In other words, scatter your streams. Right? That concept of lay your egg in one basket is nonsense. Throw away that theology. Poor people said that. That's why they are poor. When the basket falls, what do you do? You die with it there. Listen. Thank you. God bless you. NLT. It says, but divide your investments among many places. For you do not know what risks might light ahead. I hear the chains. I love the Bible. Hey, yeah. mm. Number one. Land. Land. Everybody write it down land open bracket land and anything you can get under it on it and above it it's all called land you know it as real estate land together with anything under it on it and above it look at me you are not rich if you do not own land are you hearing what i'm saying write it so that you don't forget i don't care what else you are you are poor if you do not own land because land is a fixed asset it cannot be stolen even if a bomb falls on that land it can only affect what is on it you will not see a big hole suddenly looking at you land is one of the greatest communications of God's justice and mercy upon the inhabitants of the earth. I'll stop there. Land. Two. Education. I'm giving you four fail-proof streams of income. Under education, write the following. Anything, whether speaking, writing, or setting up structures that transfer knowledge. Education is all about imparting knowledge. The Bible gives us a clue into becoming rich. He said before the coming of Christ, knowledge shall increase. There will be an unsearchable demand for knowledge. That means anything you do that will transfer knowledge to people is a guaranteed source of wealth. There's nothing to hide. There's no secret about it. There's no secret there in the first place. Education. Speaking. How many people rake in millions of dollars every week just because they are able to communicate. They are not just talking. They are transferring knowledge. Imagine that this was a business meeting and everybody is paying 100,000 for the seminar. Calculate. How many people? 100,000 times all the people we have including all those who are online and i'm doing the same thing i don't need to talk louder i don't need to shout more the exact same thing 10 years after i have preached this or i've said this 
or I've delivered this lecture, I will still be getting paid for it. Education. One of the cheapest aspects of education is writing. The ability to document your persuasion. For as long as you think there is something you want the world to hear, you can document it. The only problem is what many people call book writing is nonsense. They are just hungry people looking for money. So there is no excellence and no creativity. And at the end of it, only 100 copies are sold. And the bookstore tells you, please get out. But there is a key. Purpose-driven life. Right? Rick Warren, that one book brought tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. It was so profound, they had to create a workbook for it. Love and respect. There are many books that have become bestsellers, rediscovering the kingdom. Because individuals documented strong persuasions that rattled the ideologies of continents. Could there be a persuasion in your life right now? That you need to birth and bring out. You are sitting upon a gold mine and yet you are crying. Crying for food and crying for water. The only limitation to your life should be the voice of God. Not lack of creativity. It's God speaking to us. Education. Number three. Your job. Your job. Paid employment. It's a stream of income. So your job is not bad. You can get a job. At least you receive salary from it. And the beautiful part of that is that your salary can solve your short-term needs. Because you know every month a fixed income is coming. So it can give you room to focus on other things that will take time to build. How many have I given? Uh, let's stop at the last one. Transportation. The only reason why oil and gas is useful is because there are human beings that need to move around. We love oil and gas, but we hate transportation. How unwise. I know that the resources are also used for a lot of things. But did you know that for as long as there are human beings on earth, there must be movement. You studied something that was a clue to your prosperity, but you forgot. Remember what we, I think it was in biology, social studies, Mr. Niger. Huh? Biology, Mr. Niger. Movement as part of the quality of living things. Is that not true? That was the key to your wealth that you have been neglecting. Every day, immediately after Koinonia now. Listen, every week. I don't know how, okay, I have an idea. You cannot imagine how much is given to the transport companies that transport people without fail every week. Is that not true? Transportation. If they were your bosses, it would have been your money. Are you getting what I'm saying? How many people have had 300,000, 400,000 and then they used it to buy two phones? Foolish person. Whereas the phone is not bringing you anything. There are sometimes in that big phone only 300 naira will be there. And you can't make any call. You cannot even browse. Whereas you would have been able to buy even if it was a small golf. These are the kinds of businesses that you don't even need to know how to drive. Right? The, 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 the driver that carries me around, he started driving me three years ago. And within that three years, he has bought two extra cars. Two extra cars. And I tell you, a large percentage of that was for my money. Think about that. They are always happy. They, you never see them frowning. They are smiling because every time he sees me, he sees his destiny. And for as long as I need his services, I will keep paying for it. How many of you are sitting on millions, hundreds of thousands, roaming around, whereas, or trying to get rooms and apartments to prove a point that does not have to be proved? You want to show people, now you live in a three-bedroom flat that is empty, with one small mattress in one of the rooms, and people think you are a big boy. You are not big, you are small. Whereas something would have been bringing you income. Let me tell you something. 
the transport sector is a mysterious sector people have never studied it's a sector that starts bringing you money instantly from the first day the car goes out by evening money is coming 5 a.m in the morning brothers and sisters there are people who get up begging whether it is town service whether it is wherever I know someone who bought kekenapem right he just bought one i think second year or something like that and then when he bought that kekenapem i think about 12 12 000 comes in every week Twelve thousand. he just went and registered it with the association national union those their union and then he's around praising the lord and giving tight every week and you are saying this guy is he a thief or no 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 do you have to be smart to do that not necessary you just have to be poor. And that's why I told you there is no reason, brothers and sisters, for people to be poor. What's wrong with five people coming together? You all have 50, 50,000. Have a very well-defined term. You don't need to wait till you have one million. What's wrong with three or four people coming together? All of them having 100,000. And you buy a golf. In four, five months, you are broken even. And you can buy another one. And then buy another one. While that is happening, you are busy increasing your financial intelligence. How much have you spent from January to this year to, to now? Some of you millions. Look at how many of our parents are sitting down and getting angry at people. How many times did they pay them arrears of millions? What did they do with it? They went to a club and called friends and blew the money. They blew one golf away in one night to prove that their arrears has arrived. And yet we keep blaming God. But tonight God is giving somebody intelligence. You don't need to register any company. You don't need to know anybody. With an average car or an average golf, at least 3,000 is coming for you every day. This is the minimum. In seven days, it's 21,000 for doing nothing. You don't need to go to school. You don't need to know nobody. But there are many people sitting on board. And when you see blessed people, you think they are arrogant. They are not. They are not. The income that comes to your hand is in direct proportion to the demand. Demand. The transport sector. There are many people dreaming, I will go into oil and gas. I will go into oil and gas. How much do you know it takes to start oil and gas? You want to be a thief? Can't you start gradually? How many people are sitting on 5 million, 10 million that are waiting to buy oil blocks of billions? You have eaten your own prosperity by yourself. How many people have started popcorn? Popcorn inside ABU. Is that not true? Popcorn. I'll never forget years ago when one of, I think that was in 2006 or 7, I wanted to start one popcorn machine, popcorn business in New Bamali, and I wanted somebody to manage for me. So I needed to, I sent him to go and do a research for me on everything. I was surprised when the the owner of the popcorn said he makes 5,000 naira every day. Every day. You are eating, you bought it 30 naira. But many just like you are paying for it. And he said during orientation and uh, uh, what do we call it? Graduation matric. It can skyrocket to as much as 15,000, 20,000. There is no single ice cream machine in Zaria. Not that all those ones that uh, they, they put the thing as if it's tough. I'm talking of real, a standard... Look at this. There are many of you sitting down. What's wrong with 10 people who come in with creativity? About 250,000 will buy that thing and go and open up something. I guarantee you, in one month, you will make your money back. That's how desperate it is. I'm, I like ice cream like what? There's a place in Abuja. Every time they see me, they're happy because they, my money will finish there. I can't make it, so I must pay for it. Whatever you cannot do for yourself, be sure to pay for it. If you ever get it free, someone paid for it. Who is God speaking to tonight? I'm showing you streams. I'm a student. I'm young. Very soon you'll find out that the difference between you and graduation is one exam. Just one. And you come out and say, it's a lie. Maybe you say, get out of here. You are finished. Go, 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 go. Why should you be poor? When there is such a demand, 
a, there are, look, let me tell you something. If you have 20, 20 of any of the things I mentioned, there will still not be enough demand. How many saloons are in Italy? There are about 40,000 students. 40,000 students or more. And about 60% of those people are ladies. Count the number of saloons you have in your campus. Are they up to 10? I doubt if they are up to 10. Servicing at least 10 or 20,000 people. If you have 1,000 more of those things, it will still not be enough. And yet we criticize those who are producing because we have been, we have been wired to consume. That's all we do. Those who produce are the ones who are Many of us are, are going into food. Question. If we don't buy the food, why don't you get into businesses that do not need refrigeration and all of these things? I, I don't know about you, but I don't like things that give me heart attack. You see that? That's why I hate businesses that have to do with many people. One person's fight with his wife will affect my diligence. I don't like that. I like to be responsible. <laughs> I like to be responsible for my, my diligence or otherwise. I can't let another person's carelessness cancel everything I've done. No, if I do well, let me be commended. If I do bad, that's why all those kind of things, shipping vegetable from here to Port Harcourt, I will get into those kind of things. You can do that, but no way. So if the man is drunk on the way, I suffer because of his drunkenness. I don't like those kinds of business. This is me personally. You have been sitting on a gold mine wishing that things will change. But God is speaking to you. Especially for those of us who are working. You are earning your 50, 50,000. Why don't you close your eyes and be determined that for the next six months you are going to save. Let me tell you something. Write it down. Never borrow money as much as possible or don't borrow money as much as much as possible this is a difficult thing i know i'm human trust me it's a very difficult thing but i want you to make a vow to deal with your life that as much as god grants you the grace you will never borrow money the borrower is slave to the lender say it after me Borrowing will put you in slavery forever. You can be addicted to borrowing. Borrowing is like drugs. Because it comes easy. When you borrow five naira, you will borrow 100,000. You will borrow five million. Until you find out that you are in debt of 500 million. And you cannot know where it came from because of borrowing. A borrower. Some of you as you are sitting down right now. Not just from anything. Maybe business failure or whatever your own personal debts that you have eaten everything you are wearing and the room you are staying off key you borrowed money for it you are smiling but there is a pile of debt that is growing and you are borrowing to keep servicing it you will be a slave forever it is one of the babylonian system that's why you notice i never talked about borrowing i'm sorry i know that this insults a lot of your business book, but i don't believe it in business we teach that there's good debt and there's bad debt you use good debt as a leverage. You use bad debt for consumption. No debt is the kingdom's way. No debt. Say it. Shout it again. After hearing all that I've told you today, you can choose to be emotional about what I've said and get up and return back like someone returning back to his vomit. Or you can make up your mind and say this is it i've come to the end of myself lord i'm ready to begin to take decisions listen the key to producing anything in life is to adjust the most predictable thing in life is change change is the most predictable thing whether you participate in it or not it must happen there are two kinds of people there are victims of change and there are initiators of change whether or not you want things to change, it must change. Listen, a time will come all your friends will rise and leave you if you don't change. You will either be a victim of the change or a benefactor and an initiator. In Nigeria, many people are the recipients of change. The wealthy people are the initiators of it. I choose to be in that category. 
I refuse to just be a benefactor of change or just a, a, a victim. Whatever happens, I write it. No, sir. We are going to pray. Rise up on your feet. Psalm 66, please. Psalm 66, verse 12. Psalm 66, verse 12. Media, can you help us, please? Psalm 66. Please, everybody, rise. This is a very serious moment right now. It's a defining moment for many of us. Everyone read. One, two, read. It says we went through fire. We went through water. We went through times of hardship and turbulence. But by your wisdom, you have brought us into a wealthy place. I announce to you, Koinonia, there is a place called the wealthy place. There is a place. It's a place of plenty. It's a land of abundance. And it is absolutely left to you. I read you a scripture that the profit of the earth is for all. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over, take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of Sing it from your heart. Take over, take over. I have come to the end of myself. Take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. I still remember it as clear as yesterday. The night, 2004, lying down in my room at Area BZ, I remember getting up and making a vow. I said, Lord, this is it. If this is what it takes to be blessed, then I insist that I must be blessed. I read Miles Munro's books discovering your potential just that one book please hear me and I made a vow I told myself I know that it will not happen overnight but no matter how slow I am willing to pay the price I told myself even if I have to leap into the wealthy place I'm going there I made up my mind I said I'm tired I made up my mind that my children will never get up to see a cruel and wicked father because of prosperity. I made up my mind that I will never teach error in ministry because I'm looking for money. I made up my mind that I will never soil my hands into witchcraft or anything, the, the kind of money that will take me to hell. No. And for me to live in integrity, I knew that I would pay the price. I cried to the God of Israel. I remember it as clear as I'm looking at you. Tears were running down my eyes. And I said, oh God, I pray that you will help me. I pray that you will do something remarkable in my life. I continued like that, but nothing really happened. Watch this. We're about to round up. I want to challenge you. 2007 was when I signed out of poverty forever. Experientially, never to return there. Haven't done everything I did. I remember it was a Christ Embassy Church in Port Harcourt. That night, it was Reverend Owase, Evangelist Owase. 
and they had challenged people to sow and to do a lot of things and I went that night I will never forget I had just a bag my one bag that they gave me and recharge card a rechargeable lantern sorry I carried everything and I zipped the bag and I laid my hands I prayed with tears coming out of my eyes for three hours non-stop in tongues I said Lord enough is enough I'm tired of this situation listen for as long as you keep massaging poverty in your life, I promise you it will never leave you. It takes aggression, the fatness of your neck to break that chain and that yoke. That's what I did. I carried that bag and I was on my way. I went to the church. There was an overflow. So I sat down outside. And while I sat down outside, when it was time to sow, people were sowing television, signing checks of millions. I didn't have all of that. But I was determined to break out of poverty. Watch this. I wanted to move and the Holy Spirit told me to stay back. Look at this embarrassment. After everybody had given, then the Holy Spirit told me you can now go. In a very seemingly disgraceful and embarrassing way, I carried my back. That was my Isaac, truly from the depth of my heart, home and abroad. As I dragged it to the altar, it wasn't to give the usher and say, please, I'm embarrassed. Help me drop it there. There were beautiful ladies in that church. But I said, none of you gave me money. I'm determined to break out of this poverty. When you are determined, all these side distractions that carelessness here and there brings, you set your face like a flint. And I went there. When I went, I dropped it on the altar. Some people were laughing at me, of course, because the bag was not looking like something i'm sure they would just send it to one over it but that was my eyes listen and i returned back to my seat outside i stood there and it was as if somebody was piercing my heart with a knife a thousand times and while i stayed there the holy ghost spoke to me and he said son from this day you have entered wealth that's what the holy spirit told me he said from this day you have entered well i will never forget the next day 6 20, 6 10 on the dot in the morning somebody calls me shaking and says are you joshua selman i say yes i say who are you he said i don't know you but the holy spirit instructed me to sow a seed into your life please i need your account number i said what in the world is this a few days later the chairman board of trustee of this ministry he's a general now he called me and I think he transferred, how much was it? 400,000 or something into my account. No, no, no. He first gave me 150,000. He said, the Lord led me to tell you that you should buy a laptop and also buy a camera. They were doing a pro. <sighs> Within a span of about one week, having prepared myself, the door started opening mysteriously. In less than four to five months, I made my first meeting. I will never forget how it felt that day. Not borrow, not father's money, not uncle and auntie, not our money. I just stood there. And I said, there is a wealthy place. Time will never change anything. Decisions do. I'm going to challenge everyone to sow a seed. If you don't believe in what I'm saying, please stop. We're rounding up. The Lord led me to do this. I'm going to challenge everybody. I want you to sow a seed. It's very important. I can help you. It's not about money. You know that we are people of integrity here. But I want to challenge you to sow a seed. Even if it's not something you can do now. But I want to challenge you something that you will connect with and say lord i'm tired please if you don't believe it you don't need to argue just just remain where you are but i have seen this is the correct context in which sowing of seed comes into place not just telling people so 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 no 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 no. when you guide them and this foundation is there then you will sow there is a minimum offering there is a minimum amount I can never give God less than that for the rest of my life. I will be a wicked person. No! I put a benchmark, not in the house of God.
I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart. We have called it the year of the rain. I don't want to fool you. We are not native doctors. There is a law. Please, I want you to package the seed and lift it up. Take over. Take over. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over. Take over. We have touched the end of ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to the end of ourselves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time. Just one time. Hey, take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself. While I was preparing for this meeting, I was about to give and I said, when the Lord told me, I said, Lord, how much do I give? When the Lord mentioned the amount, I said, wow, serious. What if it is for you? There is no amount. No amount. Because I will be a fool. I remember where God took me from. You have heard people say it outside. Now you are seeing somebody who is a testimony of it. It works. It's not just Mike Modoc saying it. It's not just Bishop Oyedeko. God is no respecter of persons. You are going to pray on this seed and say, Lord, let this be the seed that will open up creativity. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. Lift your voice. We are out of time. Shikababakata pratakata balalaba. Prove me now, here with say the Lord, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and give you ideas, concepts, creativity. Please pray. Isaiah 45, please quickly. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. Media, give us quickly. And then after that, we'll look at 48, verse 17. Please, please, please hurry up. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. And then 48. Verse 17, Isaiah 45. I found this scripture in 2005 and it changed my life. One to read. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. Read on. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. Verse 3. Never forget this. And I will give you the treasures of darkness. The hidden riches of secret places. That I'm, you may know that I, the Lord, which calleth thee by name, I am the God of Israel. 48 verse 17. He says, I will give you the treasures. There are treasures in dark places. Hagar was in a place where there was water. But she thought she was in a wilderness. When the angel appeared, suddenly she saw the water. It takes this seed is the seed that will open you up to opportunities and open you up to all kinds of things. Read verse 17, everybody. One to read. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. I can lead you to the business. I can connect you to the people. I can show you what financial vehicle can turn around your life. Lift your voice and pray one minute. Lord, with this seed, turn around my captivity. Are you praying, Koinonia? Like the streams of the naked. 
I am the Lord that teacheth thee. God can teach you to profit. God can teach you to profit. God can show you. When many people are looking, you can see the treasures of darkness. The gold mine that you have been sitting on. Ask the Lord to open your eyes through this scene. Shakata baka prata kata bala de bos. Em broto koto prata skata bala de bos. Shakata tata kata kata. Shakata tata. Is the year of the rain. 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 Lord, I'm tired of this financial level. I'm tired of this dimension. With this sea, I ask for an outpouring of creativity, an outpouring of insight. Show me what I need to do to take that business to the next level. Show me the streams of income that I need to put my hand upon and by favor bring me resources, bring me people, bring me opportunities. They know not, neither will they understand. They grow in darkness and the earth is out of course. Have I not said ye are gods? And all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Hallelujah. This was what God told me many years ago. Son, do not worry about these things. Focus on my principles that what you could not eat then you will eat it tomorrow the first crusade that we went to they were less than maybe about the size of our worship team here can you imagine praying and fasting for weeks as if you would die only to get to the crusade ground we were in debt the same ladies who were in the welfare were in the worship team. They climbed trees to plot firewood for us to cook before they went to sing. But it was only our bodies that were there. Powerful crusade. And I said, Lord, someday nations and kings will come. Transformation in partnership with the word of God will take us there. And today, to him be the glory. And this is only one step out of the cave. Can I tell you this? Do not feel embarrassed by the inconveniences that you may see right now. Stop faking it. Stop roaming around getting angry and feeling this person should have helped me. The fact that they cannot remember you means you are not walking by this law. There is a level that when you get to your helpers must remember you. So you see that it was only the body of Joseph that was in that prison. Joseph knew. I'm sure Joseph was comforting them. And they were saying, Joseph, what is the basis of your confidence? You are a prisoner like us. He said, no, it is only my body that is with you. When I get up, I will make sure that I favor you. And in one night, no. Here is the fallacy of saying people just came out of nowhere. No, they rose to match where their minds have always been. Just because you did not see their training process does not mean they were not trained. You might be a politician here. Please hear me. You are starting as a local government chairman. But your level of kingdom and mental transformation is the mindset of a senator. A mindset of a president. A mindset of an ambassador. Can I tell you the truth? It will be impossible for you to remain in that position. I don't care what party you are. The force that backs this law is so powerful that no institution on earth sustains the power to stop an individual who fulfills this law. This is true. So the Lord is telling you right now, 
why is it that in spite of the fact that i'm getting money i'm not doing anything you are focused on getting not growing the first law i'm teaching you this night i can't believe we've spent so much time on just one law next time you rise and someone says you are just lucky tell the person please sit down i have a few things to tell you out of a heart of love and comfort it is not luck it is understanding are we blessed one last time never forget this teach your children teach everyone you know you are a ceo gather the people in your company and tell them stop complaining about the money you are receiving the money you are receiving is not all i am paying it is what your mindset instructed me to pay you the day you rise the instruction will change let this be your destiny in the name of jesus that by growth by growth everything that you are looking for today by growth when it comes by growth you are not afraid because everything will grow together are we blessed gentlemen god bless you i really appreciate you let's celebrate them let's give them a big has someone learned something today packaging without mental upgrade will only lead you to frustration you will give a narrative you will not have the transformation to defend are we together yes. you cannot claim you're a millionaire and then mama will ask you for ten thousand and you are talking stories you are not there simple by faith you are there in the spirit you are there but physically if you are not there be patient and work with the dignity of kingdom integrity focus more on becoming than doing you will do but let it come after you have become your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset your physical environment will gradually and eventually reflect the true state of your mindset i don't have the time and i think i've taught it here how the mind is renewed you must have access to superior word-based ideas and information the first way to upgrade your mind is access to superior word-based information teachings like this that come to challenge status quo and to build you number two repetition of those ideas until conviction is established hearing once will not bring transformation you must hear again and again can i tell you there are teachings and materials i was sharing with the school of ministry student i stand before the god of heaven and i lie not there are materials i have listened to more than six thousand times one material the goal is not for information the goal is for transportation into my mind until it becomes true number two are we still here so the first law is the law of mental transformation the second law that commands wealth and abundance in this kingdom physical law is called the law of value please write it down the law of value your value is a measure of your skill your gift your abilities whether acquired or inherent your value is a measure please write it down your value is a measure of your skill your gift your ability whether acquired or inherent proverbs 18 and verse 16 your value is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace usefulness not to destiny it is a measure of your usefulness to the marketplace the marketplace is a mystery it's not just talking about a market like your shop or mall or whatever it is a marketplace is the name given to the platform where demand and supply meet it's called the marketplace so your value is a representation of your usefulness to the marketplace write this down your value is also a measure 
of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions don't put a full stop just write please be patient you are learning something for your destiny your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful please underline needed and underline useful within the context of a civilization let me take it again your value is a measure of your ability to solve problems and provide solutions that are needed and useful solutions that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization that means your value must be needed and useful to prosper you just because it is value does not mean you will prosper that value must be needed and it must be useful you have that down write this please your value decide who pursues you and who rewards you your value decides who pursues you and who rewards you this is very important because you want to live a rewarded life and now we are learning that in addition to your mental transformation your value a measure of your problem solving ability decides who pursues you and who rewards you we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace we get paid and we get rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace africa wake up nigeria wake up these superstitious ideas we have about wealth to believe that all we need to do is just to drop seeds as important as it is and our lives will magically transform into transgenerational wealth those teachings may have come from well-meaning people but it is not accurate based on the authority of scripture and the wisdom we glean from those who have that result value we get paid and rewarded for bringing value to the marketplace write this down you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper you must discover and develop problem solving skills and abilities if you want to prosper superstitiously hoping that you will become a millionaire that you will be blessed just like that may not get the job done you must discover and you must develop problem solving skills and abilities thank you jesus write this down please become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored Become a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. All of these sentiments that come using tribe, religion, gender, age, they only become issues when your value is not needed and useful and when you have not invested in yourself to discover and develop. The moment you discover and develop your value, under normal circumstances, you will veto the sentiments of gender, sentiments of religion, sentiments of whatever it is. Most people who are willing to pay you are desperate for results. They don't really care whether it's a male hand or a female hand that provides that result. The moment you are able to solve that problem, can I tell you this? Look up, please. If a billionaire's daughter is about to die, he does not care whether it is a Muslim's hand that operates her to heal her, whether it is a Christian's hand, whether it is a 30 year old hand or a 60 year old hand. Let the hand just have the ability to make sure that person is healed and the rewards will come there. Are we together now? 
someone who wants to design an estate and is ready to invest billions in it he does not care whether the person who does the architecture is a female is a male is a, a, a whatever it is is young or old the moment you have the competence and the value to be able to deliver that results this is why you find out that in places like Europe and China, you have young boys who some of them have not even gotten to teenage. And yet they are doing all kinds of things around the world because rewards answer to value. Rewards don't answer necessarily to age. Rewards don't answer necessarily to gender. They answer to value. Whoever is solving the problem is the one who will receive the rewards. Are you learning? This is very powerful the law of value make up your mind that you will never be ignored in your world not by trying to look for a name for yourself be too valuable to be ignored there are 7.6 billion people across this world and growing but there are certain people around the globe who are called authorities across several areas and several sectors is that true there are associations literally that determine who will come to what dimension and what state because of the level of value that they have to provide no matter where you are around the world if you must attain that level of result it will not be by ignoring them may you become that kind of person oil is valuable to Nigeria and Africa and to the world go to the places where they mine oil in this nation and you watch the rigor and the activities that go on there when you see oil coming is a is a dark smelly paste that is slippery it's not something you should desire and yet nobody runs away from it because we have learned by experience that as dark and as smelly as it is it is what literally controls the wealth of nations are we blessed there is no market I know that does not have patronage whether the market is in the bush whether the market is close to the road once it is the market day you will see everybody finding their way to go there value there is something to be bought there and there is something to be sold there watch this there are people who go to meet herbalists and occultists for power or position or whatever it is and do you know that people can get up from here and go anywhere around the world and even several places in this nation you can get to a place and a herbalist a rickety looking man who is sitting down in a smelly hut he will tell you turn back and you will turn back keep your jeep there and walk on barefoot look at all the sacrifices that you, a man can go through with joy why because there is an assurance at the back of that sacrifice that you will get some political position or maybe your company will receive some contract everybody say value it is my prayer for you that you will be so valuable that whilst you are sitting down many people's prayer requests will be looking for you in Genesis chapter 41 let's hurry up in Genesis chapter 41 we'll read from verse 14 then we'll jump to 33 this was the story of jo of joseph and pharaoh remember joseph interpreted the dream in egypt and pharaoh sent and called joseph the bible says and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon and he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto pharaoh 33 having interpreted the dream he now began to use his value to proffer an economic solution to save the day now therefore let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise it was a diplomatic way of saying pharaoh i dare you go around egypt and check if you will find somebody like me now let pharaoh look out for a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of egypt next verse let's hurry up let pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up a fifth part of the land 
in the seven plenteous years uh-huh and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the land of pharaoh and let them heap food in the cities we're reading and that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine which shall be in the land of egypt that the land perish not through the famine and the thing was good in the eyes of pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants as a result pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a one as this may that be your testimony that everywhere in your office in your place of work in your field of endeavor that they will look around not from a competitive standpoint but from a standpoint of value they can say can we find such a one as this a man in whom the spirit of god is what rewards that follow value and pharaoh said to joseph for as much as god has showed thee all this there is none so discreet and wise as thou art thou shalt be over my house and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled it says only in the throne will i be greater than thou and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over the land of egypt no interview no consultation no thinking about it no come back tomorrow the lifting power of value pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck next verse he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bowed the knee to someone who 24 hours ago was a prisoner but valuable let me prophesy over someone here in the name of jesus christ for some of you before this week runs out on account of the value and the investment you have been making in yourself the pharaoh that will send for you the cyrus that will send for you i command that they must send for you and lift you in the name of jesus christ please sit down every blessed man is looking for valuable people nobody wants a liability and a nuisance in his place of work in his place of business stop bringing the issue of sentiments and say i have a brother somewhere he does not want to give me a job are you valuable there are many people who complain and say you are not giving us this contract will you do the job if given value is an enhancer of favor when you are valuable it is easy for favor to find expression in your life number three for sake of time we have to rush the third law physical law that is responsible for wealth and abundance is called the law of productivity the law of productivity productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services productivity is the quality or ability to create make or enhance products and services the ability to create make or enhance products and services another definition productivity is the ability listen carefully this is my definition now the ability to refine and develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful and then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base i will take it again that productivity is the ability to refine and develop your value your value just like crude oil once it remains crude it is only potential it cannot bring you much you will need to refine it you will need to develop your value and then turn it into products and services that are needed and useful and then to serve it with excellence to a targeted consumer base hallelujah are we learning Please look up. If I use a fetcher 
and I look for any well around this environment and I fetch water watch this now and I use a white leather bag and I pour that water inside and I bring it to you as a dignitary I said this is my gift for you are you going to accept it if I tell you to pay hundred naira say for instance for that will you pay for it but the same water that you are rejecting and getting angry and and you feel insulted for being for for being served that water in a leather bag someone will process that water is the same water from the same source sometimes and package it in a very beautiful bottle and now give it to you and sometimes in a hotel you can pay as much as 2000 naira with joy what are you paying for it is not the water you are also paying for the refinement are we together now listen to me as powerful as value is your value may be sufficient for commendation but maybe not for reward you have to turn from value to productivity many gifted people in this nation remain bankrupt because they are not productive they are valuable i can sing but nobody will reward you because it is not yet refined i can preach but nobody will place a demand upon your grace because you've not packaged your value i can cook i can bake i'm a good speaker i have a very good acumen for government all of that is just stories value as important as it is you must contend for productivity please shout it say productivity that means you must turn your value by development and refining into products and services that are needed and useful then you can serve them with excellence to a targeted consumer base are we together now yes a great friend and brother pastor nathan elbasi one time he was sharing his story how that not not too many years before now he was in this same country and would sing with a good voice with grace and yet not be rewarded and honored the way he's doing now the difference was that he turned value or he moved past the step of value to productivity now you want to invite him for instance you must be willing to go through all of the logistics that you go through with joy why because you are not only bringing a man who is valuable you are bringing a man who is productive could this be why people keep commending you? Ah, Madam, your food is so nice and yet you are poor. The day you make up your mind to now turn that value right from your kitchen, now you begin to cook and find a way of packaging it and take it to somebody who has an influence over so many people and say this is just a seed for you to taste. And the man says, who did this? He say, you. How long have you been doing this? I've done this all my life, okay? I need 100 pieces of this by tomorrow. You see that now? God now positions your destiny helpers. And in one month, you are already cooking for kings. It is only when you serve kings that you receive the reward of kings. Never stop developing yourself until you find out you are in the palace. The palace is where the gold is. The palace is where treasures are kept. If you are serving gatekeepers and serving people, thank God for that, but keep evolving. The day you see the king, you can know that you have found rest. You cannot receive the rewards of kings when you are outside the palace. Serve your way through excellence. Develop yourself, whether you are in ministry. Some of you here are great men and women of God, but you have not come to a point where you give yourself the frame that makes your value productive. Are we together? The law of productivity. When I found this, it changed my life. I made up my mind that I will invest in every aspect of my life and make sure that I continue to package my value and to serve it with excellence. Being valuable is not enough. Your value must be refined. Your value must be packaged. And your value must be served with excellence to command a reward being valuable is not enough your value must be refined your value must be packaged your value must be served with excellence 
to command a reward therefore tonight i encourage you to reject and fight mediocrity fight mediocrity like you fight satan fight it out of your life it is the sponsor of a mediocre life is a sponsor of a defeated life fight mediocrity productivity requires exposure you cannot be productive until you are exposed exposure means that you broaden your horizon beyond your current scope of sight you have to be able to expand your mind and your thinking positive exposure is very very needed if you would be productive productivity also requires creativity and innovation you have to be creative you have to be innovative you have to be creative you have to be innovative write this down i thought to add this very quickly before we skip to the next area competence still about productivity competence and excellence are magnets attracting people resources and opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting resources and attracting opportunities to your life competence and excellence are magnets please look up why do you go to a place like transcorp or any of the top hotels within this city and pay so much for a room or pay so much for a meal and sometimes the exact thing you are eating there are we together i was teaching the school of ministry students and we laughed over it that you can go to a hotel and just for a tiny cup of coffee you can pay three thousand whereas a shop just outside that hotel you can buy the coffee the spoon and the cup you will use for less than one thousand are we together because you are not just buying coffee you are buying the atmosphere too you are buying the excellence you are buying the competence you are buying the, the ambience the sense of honor everything is factored to make what would be 200 naira to become 3000 make up your mind to be productive make up your mind to be competent make up your mind to be excellent let's hurry up number four the law of increase so the first is the law of mental transformation the second is the law of value the third is the law of productivity the fourth is the law of increase in matthew chapter 25 just write it for reference when we read from verse 14 down to 30 matthew 25 the parable of the talents the bible says that the kingdom of god is like a man who went to his servants and delivered goods to them and then the bible says he gave unto one five talents two and one please pay attention and that in giving them he left them and the one who had five talents increased it to ten the one who had two talents doubled it and increased it to four the one who had a single talent went and buried it and when the man would come back to demand accountability he said what did you do with what i gave you and the one with five received the reward the one with two received the reward and then the one with only one he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you did not sow and so i thought instead of um doing this and that and that let me go and bury it here is your one talent he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant it is not enough to have financial resources you must know how to build and to increase that is why many of us continue to receive the blessings of the lord through your job through a business and yet we do not increase because we do not understand that increase is a law increase is not just something you do in business there is a law that brings increase second corinthians chapter 9 and verse 10 blessed be the name of the lord second corinthians 9 and verse 10 let me teach you something powerful now this is how money works this is the principle that helps you to distribute your financial resources for growth and for multiplication please pay attention the principle that i'm about to share with you right now 
is what will help you distribute financial resources to ensure growth and multiplication here's what the bible says now he that ministered seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and what should he do he should multiply your seed sown and increase the fruit of your righteousness four very important words here number one bread number two seed number three multiply number four increase in one verse that god can minister seed to the sower please say after me seed then say bread one more time say seed don't be tired say bread that means for every when god blesses you with financial resources in every increase and every blessing that god gives you whether it comes as a salary whether it comes as profits from a business whether it comes as a one-off show of favor in it there is always seed and there is bread everybody say seed and say bread now watch this the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure you are not hungry tomorrow I repeat the assignment of bread is to satisfy your current need the assignment of seed is to make sure tomorrow there will still be food if you sow your bread you wasted it if you eat your seed you are going to lose God is that benevolent that out of every money he sends your way there is bread for today and there is seed for tomorrow when they cried the nation of israel cried for hunger god did not send seeds what did he send bread because they needed to eat it immediately now here is what most people do and i want to observe this respectfully speaking most of our elderly ones people within the ages of say 80 down to say maybe 70 60 that generation focused so much on seed and they forgot bread that means they focused they were so futuristic about securing the destiny of children and children's children that they forgot today there are many people is until they die you see how much they are worth now the children discover that this man who died had properties that he bought around but while he was alive there were times in that house they did not have food to eat he did not know that out of all the monies that god brings there is bread and there is seed he carried both bread and seed and sowed it into the future and now people were hungry and he himself did not benefit from the blessing of the lord upon his life and then you value one or two plots of land or one or two hectares of land and you find out that he left a total of 100 million and yet that same house children could not go to good schools that same house nobody had the opportunity to advance that was a mistake now our generation of young people our mistake is that we do not understand seed what we understand is bread are you getting it now so let tomorrow go places we eat both bread and seed today and then you find out someone who is supposed to be blessed today becomes a pauper and a beggar tomorrow overnight because they were bread conscious and not seed conscious are you learning something tonight that there was a generation that focused on seed and ignored bread you would find people who never built a house by themselves yet they had their assets and everything was in millions nobody benefited from their money not the kingdom not them not their children until they died and then you have people who come to claim the inheritance who have no basis coming to that family because they were focused on the future it is only when you are alive that you can get to the future god is that benevolent to bring bread for today and seed for tomorrow but when you have a generation that also as a revenge mission i won't suffer my father he has done his own he has gone me i will enjoy my life now let me tell you this let me tell you this 
remember this is a deliverance service let me tell you this if you think like that you will be naked tomorrow it is painful to taste of the wealth and the prosperity of of this kingdom and then tomorrow you go back and have a worse tomorrow than your yesterday the path of the just should always be as a shining light are we together so everything god gives you when god gives you money for some of you from this month when you collect salary or when you collect some profit whatever it is or just someone just decides to bless you as you hold that money i want you to remember the law of increase increase is not just something you do through business it is a law that what you are holding in your hand there is seed and there is bread there is a part of it that is for tomorrow and there is a part of it that is for today you must be honest enough to be fair on yourself with the bread that is for today but you must also be disciplined enough to allow the one that should get into tomorrow to get tomorrow let me tell you this if you were to meet your accountant and ask him please i need a total of every money that has entered my bank account from when i opened it you will repent for one year for the kind of wastage you will sit down and say i can't imagine that hundred million has passed through this account one billion has passed through this account but no house no car no education where did it go to i will tell you you ate both seed and bread is god speaking to us don't say apostle all that i earn is just fifty thousand. what will it do every seed is small there is no seed that is a tree there is no seed that is as big as my hand God gave you favor January this year an uncle just blessed you and gave you one million what did you do you forgot God you forgot your future you forgot everything and you just said look I've suffered let me just let me let me do justice to myself now don't feel bad I'm not condemning you can I tell you this please you must obtain grace from God tonight to be disciplined enough to fight and reject the temptation anybody who advises you whether as friends and an association oh it's my birthday i have to spend it the way who said that why don't you take the time now and let your seed prepare a befitting birthday for you are we together there are people you see I'm, i don't mean to insult you but there are people who all they have in their account home and abroad is five hundred thousand. yet you will see them in a hotel where billionaires are the billionaires have assets that pay for their liabilities so they can spend hundred thousand in a moment somebody who owns an airline can be there having a business discussion they can spend one million right there because there are people queuing up to return the money at the airport they are not stupid people and then you find someone in their midst who are we together god is speaking to us the house of god is a place of wisdom can i tell you this listen please look up have the courage to look at friends look at everybody to say look i like this idea but i may not have the budget for this for now i will note it and when i am ready they will look at you and are you saying that nmpc job you are working in don't fall our hand don't do this can i tell you summon the courage to let them know you have mental prosperity mental prosperity there are people who would have been house owners in this city if only they knew how to eat bread and sow seeds is that true i don't mean to insult you and please forgive me if you think i do but there are people who have spent 10 years 20 years 30 years in abuja here they don't have one land as at the time land was five hundred thousand in some places fifty thousand they watched it go from one million to five million to ten million to twenty million there are people today as at the time they got their houses the surrounding lands were less than maybe one million they watch people come and today the only thing they have is a little maybe maybe half plot and they had the money how about people who can borrow 10 million or 20 million 
or 40 million to buy a jeep and be paying it with salary and then somebody now comes to hit that jeep and they tell you the shock absorber alone will buy you kekena pep <laughs> are you seeing the mistakes that we're making please take seriously what i'm saying we keep making very wrong decisions because we do not know that for everything god trusts you with in that ten thousand there is bread and there is seed if you don't respect the seed in the ten thousand one million will never come is someone learning for some of us by reason of this message you will go and open an account like i teach the students and refuse to collect the atm from the bank let that be the account where your seed apostle what do i do with it just make sure it is there first don't worry about what to do with it many of us have had the privilege do you know there are people in this nation who have had the honor and the privilege of meeting others who said look my house is valued at 30 million but i'm tr i'm relocating to america if you have five million take and they could not take an offer because all the seeds god said keep because of these days of favor you ignored it and you were eating it and now a house of 30 million that will be given to you five million but because you ate both bread and seed can i tell you this don't regret the mistakes you made yesterday start now make up your mind and discipline yourself to start now for everything god gives you every financial resource god gives you there is bread and there is seed are we together bread is for today seed is for tomorrow practice savings practice savings when god blesses you take out your tithe believe in tithing 10 percent, and then take out your seed many people recommend 20 percent of whatever you have so that you save it i told the school of ministry students you can save 20 percent of your income if you have time what is pursuing you is what determines how you run is that true if a chicken is pursuing you you can run carelessly but if a lion is pursuing you you will run with the energy of an athlete so if you know you have made mistakes and now at at 40 at age 40 you are saving 20 percent of your income you will not go far when you are talking to a child of 13 14 years you can tell him to start saving 10 20 percent but i'm telling you if you really 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 want to make progress financially you must practice the law of increase and then learn to save save there are two basic reasons why we save number one for emergencies number two for investment write it down in another series we'll take our time to deal with it there are only two reasons why we save money number one for emergencies number two for investments by the way you may want to write this down the only way money multiplies is through investments there is no other way the only way money multiplies is through investments what is investment acquisition of assets that is for another series wealthy people never take on any liability and expenditure until they can show the assets that will pay for it they spend their lives acquiring the assets that pay for their liabilities so when you meet a wealthy man and you say daddy i want to celebrate birthday he will not just carry one million and give you he will check from all his investments which one will pay for that liability if there is no investment that pays for it he will be patient that is the economy of the wealthy the only way money grows ladies and gentlemen please hear me investments in another series we may not have time to teach that now but it is important for you to know that the law of increase is very important you need to experience increase not just the arrival of financial resources almost everybody here with decent planning no matter what level you can put something together while you are praying lord open doors of favor for me but then you are practicing your savings 
and you are putting something down god can now open a door for you and then you have abundant financial resources every time you spend everything you have know that your future is crying every time you spend everything you have you just punished your future practice frugality the absence of wastage justifiable expenditures be frugal especially where you are rising there are people who can afford to be you know uh, quite um, luxurious with their lives because they have paid the price to build systems that can replenish where you are starting and where you are rising you must be frugal can i be honest with you you know that you are really making progress financially when people underestimate your real worth because you reduce yourself many levels below your true worth so that you can grow people should not be able to look at you and estimate and say you are 10 million you are 1 billion you are 500 million you are 200 million you are 500 thousand no you should leave many layers below your true worth as a sacrifice to truly get to the wealthy place that is the philosophy of wealthy people a man may make may be a millionaire and yet you still see him living a modest life being frugal the day you see him acting as if he's a millionaire he has become a billionaire since so if you join him just because you made one or two million i hope you know a millionaire is not who, one who has one million or two million no a millionaire is one who has relationships that can maintain that level intelligence that can maintain that level systems and structures that can replenish at that level and then financial resources that is at least 10 million if not you are not a millionaire so you see all this philosophy of 1 million or 1.5 and we say we are millionaires then we say we have made it and then we crash back to 100,000 again as a punishment for not learning we start again and we repeat the same mistake life is a brutal teacher it will teach you as many times as you need to learn painful teaching tonight but a profitable one are we learning the law of increase for the sake of this series the next time we're going to look at the law of relation and then we'll look at the law of investments and you'll be learning that investment is not just about money like prosperity there are five levels of investment spiritual investment mental investment investment in your body and financial investment and then we'll be learning how to store wealth it's one thing to have so much but you must know how to store it the bible says strong men retain wealth there are people who have risen to one billion billions and 10 years after they crash back to the point that they cannot bring two hundred thousand. it's a terrible life that's not god's design for us it is the reason why in africa we do not perpetuate wealth because it starts and ends with us you start from zero naira you rise to one billion by the end of your life you are minus one your children start they balance up that to zero and start again it's not supposed to be so the bible says a good man liveth an inheritance for his children's children not his children you must be two generations ahead that's how you measure your success a quick recap number one the law of mental transformation number two the law of value are we still here number three the law of productivity number four the law of increase now we're wrapping up please pay attention this is a very sensitive moment now i'll have to end here for this series but i want to end by showing you that in this kingdom we have an advantage there is the prophetic dimension of wealth you may not learn this in a business seminar but it is true there is an advantage that we have in this kingdom we are not helpless there is the prophetic dimension of wealth we're about to pray this is very important in second chronicles chapter 20 when you read from verse 20 to 25 the story of jehoshaphat and judah 
when they were attacked by three nations that came in unity to fight them second chronicles chapter 20 we begin to read from verse 20 please let's hurry up for time the bible says and they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa pay attention now and as they went forth jehoshaphat stood and said hear me o judah koinonia god is speaking and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established believe his prophets so shall ye prosper not just believe the business you are doing not just believe that your mind is transformed there is an advantage that i build in my economy for the saints in light are we together by the time you read down to 25 the people began to kill themselves and then all they came and they saw dead bodies there and the bible says jehoshaphat and the people they could not take the spoils away why will people carry gold to war because god wanted to use a prophetic dimension and give it to his people believers hear me the prophetic dimension of wealth is not a license for laziness it's a system of advantage incorporated in god's economy to prove to creation that there is a god that backs the saints are we together hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 very quickly and by a prophet the lord brought israel out of egypt egypt is a place of captivity and by a prophet was he preserved in second kings chapter 7 from verse 1 just write it down you don't have we are not we don't have the time to read it elisha said this was a famine in, in samaria i'm showing you how territories were restored through the prophetic hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria this is prophecy when there was famine the economists were still there when there was famine the business people were still there can i tell you there are times when your fishing will not bring fish it is not that your net is not good it is not that your skill is not good it is that there are powers that can stop the fish from coming there at that time you don't just need business acumen you need a prophetic advantage are we together in luke chapter 5 luke chapter 5 let's read that very quickly from verse 1 and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of god he stood by the lake of gennesaret uh-huh and he saw two sheep standing by the lake but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets what were they washing so they were valuable they had boats they had nets they were productive are we together now oh there are times they were responsible and transformed enough to go for fishing there are times that mental transformation can be limited there are times that your value can be limited there are times that your skill you are as productive as you can but because we live in a realm that is spiritual you will need jesus and he entered into one of the ships which was simon's and prayed him that he would trust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of them now when he had left speaking he said to simon i show you the prophetic dimension of wealth launch out into the deep i don't care what it is that you have done i know your economic principles say it is until december it says in in two months you cannot be blessed but this one i respect your net i respect your boat i respect your transformation but i am jesus launch out into the deep and let down your net for a drought hallelujah here's what simon said master we have toiled all night we are not lazy we are valuable we are productive we've been doing this for a long time but the pandemic just came and all our skills and the company the company is still in place but there is no profit he said nevertheless oh there is a nevertheless in a believer's equation are you hearing me 
in a believer's equation it is not one plus one that is two economically speaking one plus one is two but there are times demons can change that two into zero so you are doing one plus one but your answer is not becoming two and jesus says step out now this is not economy this is the prophetic if you don't understand this dimension your wisdom will be limited this is where the fallacy of people ignoring god comes in ignoring the prophetic ministry after 10 years of excelling they will plunge down signed satan and simon answering said master we have toiled all night we have taken nothing nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net what happened verse 6 when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break they had never caught this kind of miracle let me tell you what the prophetic can do i believe in investments where you can be patient for 10 20 years and god will lift you i believe you can buy build houses and then be paying the rent break even after three five years but believers we are not alone in this journey there is the prophetic dimension that can push a man overnight i repeat it is not a license for laziness that is why i taught you these other laws before introducing this dimension the mistake with we men of god in the body of christ is that we ignore all of this and we just tell people there is a prophetic dimension and there is so as they receive they become lazy they refuse to contend for transformation they refuse to contend to be valuable they refuse to be productive they refuse to master relationships they refuse to invest why because they know that at any time i can come but hear me god did not bring you tonight just to learn economics this is the house of god mysteriously mysteriously this house sustains the power of god to change lives and to transform even people's finances by the power of the prophetic i am a product of these principles alongside the prophetic ministry when the prophetic ministry is administered out of disalignment to scripture it will destroy it will produce imbalances but when the prophetic ministry is administered within the boundary of scripture and then balanced by these principles it can work wonders in a man's life there is something called prepared blessings in this kingdom where joseph can be sitting down and god can make pharaoh joseph you can interpret dreams but your value cannot make pharaoh call you it takes an agency from heaven to make pharaoh want to see you i took my time to pray over the things that i'm about to declare let me wrap up tonight before we pray let me define for you what is the power to get wealth based on everything i've said what then is the power to get wealth never forget this definition two definitions i will give you number one the power to get wealth is an engracing by the holy spirit upon an individual upon an organization an engracing by the holy spirit upon an individual upon an organization that number one attracts to the life of that individual people opportunities and resources what we're, we're defining the power to get wealth an engracing from the holy spirit that can come upon the life of an individual and it works like a magnet attracting to your life people the ministry of men attracting to your life opportunities attracting to your life resources number two the power to get wealth is an empowerment upon an individual or an organization to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men leading to all kinds of rewards principally financial rewards an empowerment upon an individual 
an empowerment upon a family an empowerment upon a business an empowerment upon an organization a ministry to provide extraordinary solutions to the needs of men comma leading to all kinds of results honor influence principally financial rewards this is the power to get wealth so when the bible says god gives men the power to get wealth he places a grace upon their lives that can attract to their space people resources and opportunities and then he engraces the people to provide extraordinary solutions that will lead to all kinds of results rewards even financial rewards i have an assignment as we wrap up this series is our first financial series officially in this ministry it won't be the last there are many other dimensions to cover by the grace of god i'm committed to communicating the whole counsel of god but hear me truly i tell you there is a prophetic dimension of wealth i have worked in keeping with the laws of transformation i have worked in keeping with the laws of value the laws of productivity and all the other laws but many instances in my life i've had the honor and the privilege to receive a prophetic push and i can tell you the wonder that this did in my life we're wrapping up this is a very sensitive moment please pay attention please pay attention in matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 you want the prophetic to work for you you have to know how the prophetic works it says he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward i don't have the time to begin to tell you different experiences in my life and in this ministry where god granted the grace to provoke the prophetic and when the prophetic came it took us to different levels of the blessings of the lord can i tell you believers i know that many people have suffered manipulation from men of god imbalances from men of god but i love you too much and i fear god too much to not teach you the truth these truths you have learned the spiritual laws and part of this physical loss are irrefutable but the prophetic advantage comes into the life of a believer listen carefully to be able to lift you and to bless you there are two keys that provoke the operation of the prophetic please write it down and never forget the prophetic does not just work arbitrarily there are two keys that activates the operation of the prophetic number one honor honor to god and honor to the prophetic vessel that will speak over your life you cannot dishonor god and dishonor his mouthpiece and prosper by the anointing that comes from that mouthpiece now sometimes men of god use this sadly to bully people into you know just trying to manipulate people for respect that may be wrong but i'm telling you when you dishonor god and you dishonor his anointed you will never truly be able to receive number two the second way you provoke the prophetic to work for you is through the power of sacrifice psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice you can't imagine how i've struggled to come and teach this prophetic dimension but because i cannot my mind i will not even be able to sleep knowing that i did not open you up to this dimension behind the mysterious prosperity you see of men and women whether in the kingdom or even in the secular accelerated wealth that just came into people 
there was a prophetic push and it came at the instance of honor and at the instance of a sacrifice i'm going to be speaking over your life i'm going to be declaring over you but let me tell you this for the first time in koinonia i'm going to be challenging you tonight to stand in partnership with the lord and agree with god what sacrifice that you are going to give with understanding to break out of any financial circle of limitation and retrogression years of of poverty and yokes of darkness listen if you don't believe what i'm teaching and what i'm saying please do not do it just listen to what i'm telling you you are absolutely at liberty to ignore what i'm telling you but if it is the kingdom and it is prosperity you desire whether you are following online or listening to me there are companies there are families there are individuals like peter you have tried all night the truth is that you have taken out time to transform yourself you have bought books you've gone to school you've had seminars there are others who have you are valuable others you are productive you've done your best but there are times when your net may not catch any fish there are times when your boat can take you to the river but the net will not catch any fish at that point you need the prophetic when the pandemic came people lost money people lost businesses hear me if i stand here as a man of god to lie to you to manipulate you may a curse be upon me forever for the rest of my life i fear god too much and god has shown us too much mercy to stand here and face you inside outside all the overflows and the thousands and potentially millions of people across the globe following i fear god too much to do that but also i love you too much to look beyond my reputation and teach you the truth there are times that i have taken certain steps of faith i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that i've laid down at the altar that has made god to vow certain vows in my life it was in portacot in one of the occasions i went for a convention i was outside just like koinonia and the man of god came and preached i sat down didn't have much there was nothing and he challenged people just like this and i believed him i went back home that night god is my witness i gathered my whole bag and everything my rechargeable i zipped everything i prayed in tongues laying my hands on it for three hours non-stop by the next day i dragged that bag that was everything i had i stayed outside when people were dropping seeds and dropping whatever others were giving landed properties other people were giving whatever it is i just stood back there and the holy spirit now said i should wait when everybody had finished giving he said i can walk to the altar i dragged my bag and i knew this was isaac i went and i dragged that bag like a madman people were looking at me there is a way you really want to get out of certain circles please help those under the anointing there there is a way please hear me i'm speaking to you by the spirit some of you your being here tonight is the prayer and fasting of mama for 10 years i did not go to school but oh god can you raise somebody from this family that in my lifetime let us taste of the blessing of the lord before i go to my grave god wants to give you an opportunity i'm not calling you out i'm not calling anybody out but can i tell you this i'm about to pray for you the truth is that the prophetic truly truly when it has to do with ending cycles it will take a sacrifice when god wanted many sons he took his own son as a sacrifice and buried him in the ground he that weepeth bearing precious seeds shall doubtless return rejoicing bringing in the sheaves can i tell you this i'm not supposed to say it, but i will tell you while i was preparing the moment the lord put it in my heart to teach on this prophetic dimension god gave me an instruction myself on what to sow because i have to believe in this message too if i don't believe it i'm a hypocrite i don't leave off what people do and bring i leave off my own obedience when god told me what to sow i had to say wow and i did it immediately before coming 
and even at that i made sure that i packaged my own seat to come and that one is between me and god this one now is apostle preaching to everybody including me so don't think it's something that we're just talking i believe in what i'm doing can i tell you this for some of you you have been praying and saying lord how long i am tired of this circle for others you need to go and contend for transformation others you need to work on your value others you need to work on productivity others you need to work on all the spiritual laws but in addition to that god is giving us an opportunity tonight to end circles when i drop that seed and i return back i remember the holy ghost spoke to me outside and said from this day you have entered wealth i didn't understand what that meant listen carefully god is my witness by the next day 6 10 in the morning someone calls me shaking under the anointing who is this are you so 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 and so i said yes he said send me your account number i just thought immediately these are all these scammers who just want he said no 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 i woke up this morning with an instruction that i should do a transfer to your account i said what is this i had a release in my spirit i took the risk i was surprised to see what the person sent i said what in the world is this god now connected me to somebody and the rest is history god began to lift and to show himself faithful somebody who loved me so much you will think that i i don't know if i cough that man will buy me a pharmacy not a drug i started watching these things happen only a fool leaves what works i held on to that truth and i said this must work i remember one time in this ministry when we started the lord gave an instruction to do to empty the entire account i stand by the god of heaven and i tell you the truth that's an economic risk there are times when under divine instruction both bread and seed can go you can cast your bread upon the waters and after many days he says you will find it in one week seven days what god did for this ministry this dear vision he has so honored till jesus comes we will not recover from it i'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables many of you are already practitioners of these truths some of you are practitioners of it but by manipulation some of you are doing it but it, it, there was no light and revelation can i tell you this i'm about to pray for you our time is up you are going to agree with god right now as a family as a business as an individual lord i believe you and i believe your servant what seed it is i'm not there's no amount we are not mentioning anything i'm not calling anybody out everyone should participate your children whoever if it's a seed that you want to give here ushers i don't know how the, how you do it maybe the account details will be given if it's something you want to copy the account details and so but brothers and sisters i want to pray for you the prophetic to bring people out of seasons of 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 shame and reproach it is with sacrifice a sacrifice is not an offering no if a sacrifice does not touch you it will not touch god i want you to stand Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my lifting has come. Oh, my rising has come oh, 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 oh my rise the lord gave me an instruction many years ago to carry a seed which was a sacrifice and take to canaan land and go and drop it before god's servant it was a huge sacrifice 
I got up like a madman, got the next available flight, went there, did everything I did. I came out with joy knowing that my life would change. And the Holy Spirit asked me to come out of the vehicle. He said I should lay my hands on the ground there in Canaan land. And he says from today you have entered the overflow anointing. I can show you different points in my life. A day came in my life when the Lord spoke to me and said, I will begin to raise people who will be personal financiers to your life, not ministry. I will begin to raise kings and nobles from across the globe whose assignment is to make sure you are comfortable serving the purposes of God. I believed him. A sacrifice is powerful a sacrifice can change an individual's life listen to me i'm going to give you room to pray in one minute you know some of you are in debt right now into the millions and into the billions corporate debt personal debt some of you have lost money in investments there is no way you can get it back some of you there are all kinds of problems you have court cases right now this kind goeth not but by sacrifice i'm going to give you two minutes our time is gone to cry before the god of heaven and to tell him lord i have come to the end of this season of begging and borrowing and crying please take it serious please in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god no distraction everywhere overflows please pray some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears god is giving you an opportunity to change your life pray let it be from the depth of your heart your life is about to change oh my lifting has come Oh, 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 my lifting has come. Oh, 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 my season has come. Oh, 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 oh my season. I like you to declare lord what my father could not do what my mother could not do this embargo of poverty and hardship upon my life upon my ministry upon my family it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end it's time to bring it to an end man of god pray you may be anointed but you need to engage the principle that brings supply for your life and for ministry. Otherwise, you will suffer as if God did not call you. Businessman, listen to me. There are times your boat and your fish may not be able to catch. You will need the master's voice. But before the master's voice, you will need to give your boat as an act of faith. don't fight what god puts in your heart for some of you this may be the first time in your christian experience you will be making a real sacrifice prompted by a man of god for others that is the principle that kept lifting you to where you are in the name of jesus now please listen to me please hear me ushers i like you to just i don't know how you do it but position yourselves around just help them please my god i sense such a strong anointing here i'm about to break certain things now if there is a seed here and you have it your sacrifice whatever i check your writing we can have the account numbers pr projected please make sure no scammer or nobody defrauds you we are people of integrity whatever seed i want to pray for you when God spoke with joy, I gave mine and I still made sure. I said, no, I cannot come and be praying for God's people and then not hold a sacrifice to myself. 
I believe in this thing that I teach with all my heart. This is how he has brought us thus far. There is no magic to it. I want to pray for you. There is a grace that will come upon you today. Please hear me. Many of you, you will marvel and wonder at what God begins to do. There is an anointing that will come upon businesses, upon individuals. I'm telling you this by the God who called me. That at the instance of this sacrifice, and those who are following from any nation, the US, Europe, here in Nigeria, there are pastors who are watching. God is telling you to do this for your ministry. There are business people who are watching. God has been speaking to you for a long time. Now is the time. I'm not asking anybody to come out. If you're doing a transfer, that is the account there. Alas, kodi la kaushiata. Pray de ne shele baruzia zeneka tuske alabada. If you have your seed, lift it. If it's a transfer, do it. If you're making a commitment, please don't be emotional and don't make emotional decisions. No. But I can tell you by God, this is an instruction that God gave me. Otherwise, I would not do this. Since Koinonia started in Abuja, this is the first time that a call is being made by the Spirit of God. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Please keep standing. I'm going to pray. I'm going to bow my knees to the God of my covenant. Listen to me. If you have never believed a man of God in your life, please, I want you to believe. Don't waste your time. Please, no movement around. I want you to believe. I want to pray for you. The vision that brought me to ministry was a vision of a generation crying and said, there's no food and there's no water. And this, I said, who is the cause? And they said, you are the one. I wanted to run and help them, but I was afraid because there were people who were chasing me. And a gray, gray bearded man that I know now to be the Holy Spirit held my hand. And he said, let us go. Brothers and sisters, I know what it means to be in insufficiency. Don't think this is just a preacher's talk. At whatever level God has helped you, there is more. Believe me when I tell you. There is more it will look like arrogance to begin to tell you the faithfulness of God I just leave that as as let Jesus be glorified but I want to pray for you I want you to believe and shout a resounding amen whether you are standing or falling I want you to believe it with all your heart father don't kneel you can stand i will do the kneeling i kneel and i bow before you by this apostolic and prophetic grace Skade baranta skade, ke breketas ke leko dos koto bagata, em brekete ko dos ke delegata. Skade baranta skade bereketos, em brekete ke te bagata gata. Skoto barus skade delegata batagata. Every force sitting on anyone's financial destiny, right now in the name of Jesus. By the power that raised Christ from the dead, let that force be dislodged now. Be dislodged now. Be dislodged now. Master, we have toiled all night. Let me speak to someone here. 
let let the seasons of toiling walking like an elephant eating like an ant let it come to end in your life now let it come to end in your life now hear me everyone here who is in debt whether personal debt or business debt i prophesy by the god of heaven between now and the next three months by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic come out of that debt now come out of that debt now every business here that has refused to grow has refused to rise hear ye the word of the lord between now and the end of 2021 be 10 times better than you are hear me there are many of us here it's not like you are lacking food to eat but you keep recycling the same financial level recycling you can't break out of it some of you have been on building projects for close to 10 years to finish it and move your family is not there by the power of the prophetic i push you to the next level of your destiny i push you to the next level of your finances hear me i tell you fire is falling there are families here that love the lord with all their hearts but nobody has risen financially in that family for whatever reason if you belong to that family right now i'm speaking to you because the power of god is coming upon you i decree and declare anyone here who is part of any family where the circle is just poverty lack and hardship i declare may that cause be broken now may that cause be broken now every ministry here that is struggling financially following online you are a man of god your church your ministry is struggling financially up today and down tomorrow in the name of jesus christ come out of that shame and reproach now i want to pray for you the lord is ministering to me that there are people it's not like you are poor but all your resources are hanging everywhere you keep watching resources that are supposed to have come but it does not come wherever it is in the name of jesus i decree and declare i command those resources to come to you now come to you now come to you now hear me there are some of you you were part of the lifting of many people but they forgot you that is the reason why you are where you are it's not that you are lazy you've been part of many people's rising but now they've left you where you are in the name of jesus i pray the destiny helper assigned to wipe your tears hold your hands and lift you wherever they are this week i command them to appear before your destiny appear before your destiny all those trusting god for jobs trusting god to start businesses trusting god for any value adding structure in the name of jesus i declare by the power that raised christ from the dead beginning from this week let there be testimonies
and anyone sitting on your glory your financial glory i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn until you sit on your rightful place hear me there are many of you as you go to sleep tonight god will open up to you visions and he will tell you what to do believe me as you go to bed god will show you what to do hear me there are some of you here because of the urgency of the situation in your life a fish does not carry coin but when there is need to pay tax god can make even a fish to bring coin i pray for you from the most unexpected means may the resources to take away shame from your life may it appear in the name of jesus now hear me i speak over every sacrifice many of you are making profound sacrifices only god knows what you are doing individuals businesses ministries couple children young old organizations but i pray for you by the power that raised christ from the dead the same way fire came upon the sacrifice of elijah in the name of jesus may fire rest on your sacrifice hear me for some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your promotion and i really mean what i'm saying for some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your political destiny some of you what you sowed is for the next level of your destiny whatever has died in your hand hear the word of the lord let it come back to life now hear me if you have never experienced an individual calling you to say i want to help you i release that mantle on you now i release that mantle on you now i release that mantle on you now I release that mantle on you now. Inside, outside, online. Receive that grace right now. Please hear me. Hear me. I am not praying for you. For someone to just come and help you once. I'm praying for someone who will build a system around your life. hallelujah please hear me if there is anyone who has victimized you financially either based on tribal sentiments based on religion based on political affiliation or whatever it is right now i lose those chains of you go forward 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 I want you to watch the marvelous testimonies of strange financial miracles you are going to be hearing in the name of Jesus Christ can I be honest with you for some of you you will be sitting in your home someone will bring the key to a house and say take I speak this by the unction of heaven for some of you will be sitting and someone will bring a car and say God instructed me to give you hear me for some of you someone will come and meet you and say god said i should raise your children till university <laughs> now hear this the final prayer there is an anointing that comes upon a man that can attract opportunities that can attract people that can attract resources i taught you last week if you want to pick nails from the ground here you don't pick them one by one you pass a magnet around them and it will pick everything some of you that's what you are about to become right now hear me 
some of you your helpers are already in koinonia they are in this place right now now therefore as i have received from the fathers of faith this is a relay this grace was passed it is not something we invented as i have really as i have received from the fathers and by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic this grace that mysteriously attracts resources attracts men attracts opportunity in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god koinonia take that grace now let that grace come on your head now let that grace come on your business now take that grace now take that mantle now be blessed be blessed be blessed and hear me any power that fights your prosperity from today in the name of jesus that power goes down before your face and any man who says over his dead body for this prophetic word to come to pass may the ground open and swallow them may the ground open and swallow them every yoke every enchantment every activity of witchcraft negative patterns i break it now in the name of jesus christ go and return with testimonies in the name of jesus give jesus praise give jesus praise it's a new season hallelujah now please be patient i know our time is up you have your offering here or you have your your sacrifice please let me have one um usher so that i can drop this if you are to drop let's minimize movement you can drop it with the ushers if it's an, a transfer you are making i want to simply make the altar call and we're done so we'll do this very quickly hallelujah i assure you that your life will never be the same there are people here even though we're teaching on a financial series remember we said the first level of prosperity please minimize movement let's honor the altar call the first level of prosperity is your spiritual prosperity whilst you heard me teach the lord began to speak to you that you have not made your relationship right with jesus or you are saying apostle truly i love jesus but my obsession for money and all of these things have distracted me and i'm not serious spiritually but i want to make it right right now whether you are in this auditorium or in the overflow do not leave this place without giving jesus a chance to your life I'm going to count one to five i want you to run and come and stand here everyone up the balcony around don't wait for anyone to come to be the first you'll be the first come and stand before jesus this is an opportunity celebrate them they are coming i will count one to five and afterwards we are going to pray one quickly koinonia celebrate them please ushers clear the way for them if they are coming for the altar call come to jesus god bless you come 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 to jesus i'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you jesus i'm sorry lord for the thing i've made it when it's all about you it's all about you are you coming run to jesus three it's all about you it's all about you it's all about you jesus thank you for coming every one of you you came to church to encounter jesus you're coming please run please run i'm about to lead them to pray run quickly so that you catch up god bless you god bless you god bless you now all of you please lift your right hand high above your head jesus is the one you are speaking to say after me lord jesus one more time say lord jesus tonight i have heard your word 
I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification tonight I obtain forgiveness of my sin I obtain the gift of eternal life from you I decree and I declare that Jesus is my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I am a child of God I go forward ever and backward never in Jesus name keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones you have brought them to yourself I pray that the grace to keep them let that grace be released upon you I declare your sins forgiven I declare that a new life is yours in Christ Jesus the grace to walk in victory is yours too in Jesus name I commend you to the ministry of the word and I commend you to the ministry of the spirit may you be established and grounded in righteousness in Jesus name I pray amen and amen I want you to please move to my right which is your left there's a gentleman waving the placard please follow them very quickly let's celebrate them as they go the counselors will meet with you for a few minutes and then you will be back please help mama someone help our mother praise the name of the Lord just to be to remind you that you can get this teaching and the one for last week on our YouTube page by the way please make sure you follow all our social media platforms Koinonia Global there's Koinonia Abuja and every other arm of expression please do well to connect but you can get the teachings on Koinonia Global this night and then tomorrow take out time to listen to it listen to it with your family members and make sure that it blesses you and then do not forget that next week is our miracle service for the month of October please rise up on your feet I decree and declare that your week beginning is blessed this will be a week full of testimonies for you you will see the mighty hand of God at work in your life in the name of Jesus by next week, many of you will return with tears some testimonies. In the name of Jesus Christ. And now together, let's share the grace in fellowship. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.